Hello, Dennis. Hi, we're live? Yep, we're live. I got three things to kick off this show. Three, three things. Yeah. All right, go for number three. For, go for number one, I guess. I was going to take them in reverse order, but... Mm, they're not in any order. Um, number one... Just finished playing Call of Duty with my son. I think he's better than me. Really? Yeah. It was me, him, and one of my homies. <laughs> We're playing. We're dropping in Warzone. We drop into the the, uh, um, the prison. I'm like on a tower. I, I got a sniper, so I'm like, all right, let me do some sniping, but I'm awful. <laughs> like, I'm like hiding up there. I hear Max like, yeah, baby! Let's go! Let's go! I'm like, what's going on? But he's like, I just killed a dude! Like, and then like, yeah, let's go! Let's go. I'm like, what's going on over there? And I'm like, dude, how many kills you just get? He's like, uh, a lot. I'm like, how many? Like, what number? Four? I'm like, really? All right. Me and my buddy, I think, got zero. All right. <laughs> All right, we got Bilal already in there, ready to join us. And we play. I think that's what it is, kids. I think my nephew, my nephew talks so much shit about getting a one v one me in Fortnite, and I just talk so much shit back to him, like you don't want it, you don't want yeah, it. Yeah, but I think what the thing is is like to us, it like matters a little bit. To them, there's like doo, 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 doo. like I'll just die and play again. No, I think my nephew plays competitively right now. He's really into it. Like, he's probably going to smoke me. Right. But what I'm saying is, like, yes, he's he's going for the kill. You know what I mean? But, like, it's th – th for him, there's no shame in dying. There's just another life. Like, whatever. Yeah. Me and you, it's like, uh, like, what? And when I see people, I get panicky. I can't, like, calm down and just, like – you're talking in Call of Duty or Fortnite? Well, eat the same thing. I just get pit. I'm just all over the place. Like, you know what it is? Instead of just putting it on the guy and shooting, I'm putting it on the guy anticipating him moving. And I'm trying to, like, move with him and shit like that, you know? Why are you getting panicky? I don't fucking know because I fucking want to win. I don't know. You bet. I need, like, a sports psychologist for that shit. I don't know. For your, for your video uh, gaming? I, I don't know. I'm just, when I see people, I get like, ah, like, here we go. Yeah, you got that little panic. You got to get rid of that. So that's one. Two, I recently bought an Arctic cooler. It's in the same realm as the Yeti cooler, right? 200. Yo. Hey, what's up, Bilal? Hey, what up? I'm just telling Stan about uh, this Arctic cooler I bought. So I had a Halloween party well, it, past Saturday, oh, right? Oh, hold on first. Bilal, can we get you to turn your phone long ways? Oh, my bad. All good. All right, go, so me I had go a, Menace. I had a house party, Halloween party this past Saturday. Three different coolers. I had, like, my girlfriend brought a cooler. I got a Coleman cooler, which has been my, like, my varsity lineup cooler. But now he's got an Arctic cooler, right? Not that it's been like super hot here, but like it's been like 60s, whatever. The Arctic cooler, it's Thursday, Wednesday, still has fucking like full blown ice in it. Oh, like, obviously wow. something's melt, but like yeah. it, there's still ice in there. That was Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's four days ago. We still got ice cubes in there. Are those expensive? Are they better than Traeger? Traeger? Not Traeger. Yeah, what is that other one? Yeti. Yeti. Yeti, yeah. I mean, it's people. People have like, uh, if you go on YouTube, people have cut them both in half and been like, same thing. Oh, right. And it's cheaper? hundred dollars cheaper. Oh wow. Yes, and even to explain my attire, Menace, I was going to open the show with, you know, I, I showed Dennis Bermuda as the front kick, and that's how he won all of his fights. <laughs> you did not. You did not go into character at all Saturday. Uh, I did for Dean when I first got there, oh. and your brother was giving me shit. And a few select people, I gave them that, you know. Like, the only reason I'm here is because Dennis Bermudez won all those fights because I showed him the front kick. What about he, when he lost? 
he wasn't doing what I told him. He wasn't doing what I told him, you know? But Did he say that when, when the he's, guys he talked to lost? Pretty, pretty When they won, he would come out and be like, yep, I showed him that front kick. I show, Every time a front kick won a fight, he was like, yeah, I know that guy. I showed him that front kick. But if they lost, it was always, but never, when he lost, never, you never you never heard of him anymore. He just like walked away. Yeah, but Kinda like my coaches, like your coaches. <laughs> but Bilal Muhammad, welcome back to Menace and the Man. Yeah, man. The ho- you guys, you know, first of all, you guys told me Gilbert Burns is one of the guys that always comes late. You guys told me eight o'clock. It's like eight twenty. So uh, there's like a little. Uh, oh, now I don't know, wow. don't know who to trust. Oh, that's oh. a little bit. That's a little bit my fault. Oh no! no I'm good. I'm messing around. We're always late too. We're always late. We'll admit that. Yeah, we're we're usually never on time. When I post like the start time of the show, sometimes I'll say around eight o'clock, and then sometimes I'll just put like eight o'clock. And then when I put oh, just okay. when I put just eight o'clock, I'm like, oh man, I know we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think Jared hit me up too. I don't know if he's going to hop on or not. Um, possibly. He said he was dealing with his lady at the moment, so we'll see what happens with that. What I had planned was I was like, Jared, get your girl on too. And I was going to be like, all right, we're going to play a game now that we have the hottest game show host in the land right here. <laughs> and I was going to be like, who's really Jared Gordon's best friend? Oh, and I was gonna ask that you would be questions. good. Yeah. That so off good. of that, hang on, Stan. I like that Bilal's here too. I got a question. I heard it today. Let's say... You were given. You could either have fifty thousand dollars, or your best friend gets five hundred thousand dollars. What do you do? That's interesting. Like, does he know he got the five hundred thousand dollars because of me, or is he just like randomly going to get five hundred thousand dollars? I don't. I don't know if if it was like he doesn't know you gave it to him, or I think that's probably it. Where are you always like getting? Because, gave it to because wow, you've got Friday nights. You've got fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, like, it, yeah. It's it's cool, but like it's not life changing. It's like yeah, cool, I can buy a cool toy. Yeah, exactly. But five hundred thousand dollars, that's like altering someone's life a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, like your that's house paid off, bang. Yeah, but it's one of those two where if, like if I'm not gonna get credit for it, do I really want to do that? But uh, that's a that's a tough one. That's a tough I was literally one. thinking about that today. I was literally we were eating sandwiches in Miami, and I was like walking to the beach, and I was like, "Man, uh, man, what if you found like a million dollars on the floor right now?" And I and I told him, "What if I found it and I gave you ten thousand? Would you be mad?" And he was like, <laughs> "Really? You only need to give me ten thousand? I said, "Yeah, but I found it. Like you don't have no money. Yet. Like you, it, like you didn't have anything earlier today, but I'm giving you ten thousand. But you know, I just found a million dollars. Would you be mad or not?" And he was like getting mad, and I was like, "Bro, I'm just giving you ten. I don't have to give you the ten thousand dollars. Like, relax. Like, you should be happy that he's giving me ten thousand dollars, right?" Oh, he wants a 50-50 split, dude. Yeah, and I was like, "No, no. Like, you were in the bathroom. I went. I saw it on the ground myself. I picked it up. I ran to you, and I said, "Yo, look what I just found. Here goes ten thousand. And he's gonna be like, "No, how much you got?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Man, I would be yeah. like, dope, dude. Thanks, right?" Hang on, no, neither of you guys have answered my question. <laughs> I would go for the five hundred thousand. Okay. I would get my friend the five hundred thousand. Yeah, I guess I'll do that too. It's a larger sum of money, you know. Yeah. Right. So, Grant, granted, I'm, I mean, I, if if you can get the credit, I'd be like, yo, bro, here's the like, Stan, I'm giving you five hundred thousand dollars. Just give me two fifty. Like you're like, right? You'd do that. But, uh, well, but yeah, no be credit. like, "Hey, dude, I mean, I I got the money, and I thought about some things, and I can only give you fifty grand." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like, no, but what if they like came that, at? What right? if they came at him with, uh, "Yo, you, you had like a dead aunt or somebody that?" What if they said, "No, we're not gonna say it's from you." We're like, "Yo, you got a dead aunt that left an inheritance to you, five hundred thousand. So like, yeah, it had nothing to do with you. Then what would you do? Like, then that changes everything." Because uh, what are you going to yeah. do? Hey, yo, can I borrow some money? Or... I, I feel like this is a new angle Dennis has taken our show sometimes yeah. where he's just going to ask hey. these hypotheticals that really don't have an answer. You can just keep going you, with it. Hang on. I found a loophole. I think. I'd be like, 
My lady is my best friend. <laughs> she gets away. She's like, hey, I'm out of here. Catch you later. If that happened, I think I'm catching a body for sure. <laughs> I'm not oh, lying. Man. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that one. Are you single at the moment, Bilal? No, no, I have a girl. And now, what happens in Muslim culture? Like you have to, obviously, sex. I'm engaged, yeah. You can have sex before marriage. No. So no sex before marriage. You can only have sex no. after the wedding. Yes. All right, you guys then have. You get, then you get you get a couple more wives. So now, do you get like arranged marriages? Not arranged marriage, right? Dude, I would have been married at like no. 16. <laughs> no, that's how a lot of them are. A lot of them get married young. And it's not like arranged per se. It's more so like if you want to, if you see a girl you like, you talk to them and then you talk, you talk to their parents first. And then you have to do it that way where both parents agree to, all right, you know, you can talk to my daughter. But if you want to start doing stuff with it, like you have to show that, yo, I'm asking for a man hand in marriage. It's saying like, this is no dating thing that I'm going to get rid of her after a month and I'm going to move on to somebody else. Like they don't do that. Yeah. Now but- I don't want to put you, you know, on the spot in front of Allah, but so you're a virgin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Listen, I don't. <laughs> Dude, there's a million people watching this right now. Relax. 3.3 million at the moment. <laughs> Which uh, means question. like three. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I literally do that on my show. I'm like, man, there's like five people watching. I'm like, oh, Dude, that can man. explain your fu- – like, listen, if you're that backed up, you're just, you're just like, I need to kill people because I need to. I need to fight. Yeah. I mean, I would be – I'd yeah. probably be champion right now. <laughs> <laughs> So now is that what it is? Like Muslim, um, I guess I'm just going to shoot shoot it out there. You can masturbate, right? I mean. Because this would explain a lot too. Maybe that's also what helps you like be a you're super. You're not supposed to either too. So like it's all. Well, here's the thing too, Bilal. All- everything that you say on this show isn't real. It's everything's allegedly hypothetical. <laughs> might not. We're actors reading off scripts. So is is Khabib married? No. Khabib's yeah, married. He has kids. Khabib has two kids. Or yeah. I think three kids. Oh, all right. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Khabib is married with kids. Just yeah. because Connor's yeah, just wife like, gets put in everything, I thought maybe could be, you know, I would see some of Khabib's wife if he was married or, you know. No, nah, but they're, they're like very private with everything. Like they don't need to post that stuff on social media, I feel like. Because you look at it, you have a million, five hundred million followers. Then you have everybody taking pictures and like talking about them. Imagine the comments that he gets in his comment section. So like I wouldn't want to post – like I barely post my family because I don't like I have so many freaking racist people that I'll sit there and comment on my stuff and yeah. then, like if I see something stupid like that or my mom literally goes through all my comments and she's like hey how come you didn't reply to this guy and I'm like I don't want my mom seeing bad comments because she'll be like this guy's your fan say something say something good to him and I'm like yo stop reading my comments it'll be like 100 comments and she'll be like why don't you reply to this guy reply to this guy reply to this guy well oh, even so that your mom's a psychopath comments. like my mom yeah, literally. My mom will sit there, go through all the comments, and then it'll be like a guy saying hi, and she'll be like, how come you didn't tell this guy hi? And I'll be like, what guy, what guy are you talking about? I don't know who that is. And she'll be like, he's telling your thing. Like, you need to be humble. And I'm like, all right. Damn. My uh, When I first was fighting and I had kids, stuff like that, I'm like, I'm never going to post my kids on, on social media just because, like, Listen, man, I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the public eye. Like someone's gonna see my kid and wanna steal them because, you know, I just gotta I'm gonna have like I'm, be, I'm like famous, you know? And then I realized like, yeah, I'm not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like <laughs> they're like, oh, I'll take pictures of my kids, I'm like it's shit. <laughs> they see your kid, they give him like candy. But in my head, but in my head, when I got in the UFC and started having kids, I'm like, dude, listen, I gotta think as if I'm Brad Pitt because <laughs> I just, you know. Yeah, when you go out and then you see somebody ask you for the picture and then you're like, yeah, it happens to me all the time. It's, but it now, never I, happens at all. Yeah, but like, so like that's one aspect is like a nice smiling picture of my kid. But like some people be putting like, you know, baby, you know, one-year-old's like naked in the bath. I'm like that, like now you get some creeps though that are looking for that shit. Yeah, you know? I think Bisming posted a couple like that with his son in like underwear or something like that. And it'd be like, 
he was getting people like calling him like what do you do why would you do this and i'm like looking at him like man what the what are you guys talking about it's like him and his son and they'd be like yeah. they were like calling him rapers or something like that on his uh, social media i was like what the uh, heck people are just, like nuts oh my god people are insane like the it, you'll see it with remember the show and we see it with menace and the man as shows get bigger even podcasts like the fans of MMA, like I'm sure you guys see it as fighters, they're horrible sometimes. Oh, yeah. God. Like your mom. Literally, mo- like, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, I, like, I get so many racist, like, messages. And then I had, when I when I got my fight signed for Sean Brady, like, I literally had messages from this dude that, like, kept commenting on my thing saying, you don't deserve to fight Sean Brady. You don't deserve to fight Sean Brady. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? The average then, person is so delusional, it's insane. Dude, it's literally, I'm like, and I look at them, and I like they seem like a normal person when I look at their page. And then I'm like, man, I don't even want to respond to this guy because like he's yeah. probably nuts. I loved how but, like I'll be at work. Sorry, Stan. I'll be at work, and like my coworkers will be talking about like the NFL or baseball. I'm like, dude, that guy. They'll be like, that guy fucking sucks. I'm like, are you like you would never say that to that guy's face? Like obviously he doesn't suck. He's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. When you, you you ever get those where the guy the guy will say something stupid to you like I'll get guys that are like uh like post like dump my memes of me losing or something like that like I I like post anything and they'll post me of me losing and I'll be like uh real funny they're like oh my god thank you bro I'm a huge fan I'm glad you replied to me and I'm like did you seriously just do that <laughs> like you just wanted to reply and there say, there like, are the some thing. sickos out there yeah that like I like Quinta got so hi. many fans by fighting on Twitter. Yeah, people I mean, say something. He'll like fight all day for hours with them. They're like, "Yo, yeah. man, like good debate. I'm a fan now." <laughs> like what? <laughs> but that's literally how you're gonna get followers now. It ain't about like, oh, let me post motivational memes or memes you're working out or some stuff. Like you gotta post dumb stuff and then reply to dumb trolls, and that's just gonna attract more trolls and dumb people. So that's how you're gonna gain your followers. Uh, I I can't. It's not organic for me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's. What, like where people like say like guys like Leon Edwards and stuff, or they're like, oh man, you need to talk more trash or stuff like that. But like even when they do it, like you can just tell it's not natural mm-hmm. for them. So like they'll sit there and just like start swearing at you or cursing at you because they don't know. No, they're not like very witty or anything like a McGregor right. or something like that. Where they where they do it, and it seems professional. It seems cool. Like it's like it's funny when like McGregor or somebody treats you. And like even John Jones, John Jones is so good at it. And Darren Till is like, I just realized this guy's like the funniest guy in the world. With the way he just like tweets it out, just because you can just tell the guy just being himself. Oh, Speaking he, about John Jones, sorry, I'm gonna jump. Wait, wait, Darren Till is fucking funny, dude. Hilarious, right? He's I'm sitting there like, I'm like, man, this guy's like literally the funniest guy. And then I messaged him to be on my show. I was like, you know what? Let me slide in his DM. See if he says yeah. And he was just like, oh yeah, for sure, brother. I'm down. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. And he was like, just literally like the coolest guy. And you're like, man. I like you don't realize those type of things. So is, wait, guys. is that the move with Darren Till? Just slide in the DMs because we have. I don't think literally, we. That's a, that's we haven't even tried him. Did. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm down. Come on, let me know." And then like he missed the first show because uh, we got messed up with the time zones. But then he's like, "Don't worry, this time I'm staying up. No matter what time it is, let me know. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on." And I'm like, "All right, cool." Like so, was, let's segue into that. Yeah. Fuck John Jones for now. You have a show. Can you give us stands? But tell me about it. I gotta watch it. I heard you got something up my alley. Come on, dude! You got me on the you got me on this show, and you don't know nothing about my show. That's how De- Dennis doesn't even. Do, know. I'm wait, having wait, you talk wait. about it on my show, you ninny. In in Dennis's defense, Dennis doesn't even know much about fighting, other than how to fight. He doesn't know I'm about like a segue to talk about your sh- to like plug your stuff, you ninny. No, nah, I'm just messing around. No, nah, but uh, yeah, it's like a more of a trivia game show where we're, like we'll sit there talking about the fights coming up soon, but then we we had like two contestants with uh, usually two good fighters. Um, we've had some big names on the show, but then we'll just do like random trivia stuff. Usually it's like a bunch of memes. So like I'll do a bunch of, uh, the guy fighters and I put girl filters on them. And if the first person, uh, know who it is, oh, wow. they win. Yeah. It's, it's real fun. And then, uh, usually at the end, whoever loses, they have to do like a challenge. And then, um, the, when I had Ali against Gilbert Burns, Gilbert Burns lost. And his challenge was he just had to randomly tweet. John Jones will lose to Israel at Asanya. And he had to tag both of them. And like, and you can't say that you, there was a reason for doing it. Dude, he literally got so many freaking people retweeting it and talking trash to him about it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, this one blew up. For, for tomorrow's <laughs> show, I got Paul Felder against Dustin Poirier. And then the, the losing tweet challenge is going to be hilarious. The, losing, the, the loser has to tweet, 
I don't know why I think it's just so funny, but the loser has to tweet, man, I hate Robert Whitaker. Like, why Robert Whitaker is the nicest guy in the world? He's probably, he's probably, he's probably gonna be like, what do you, like, why? Why would you, why would you hate me for it? Oh, uh, that would be such a tough one. The, That's right? so, it's gonna be so tough. funny, though. It's gonna be so funny because Robert Whitaker's gonna be like, like, what? Brother, why? Oh, Robert Whitaker's uh, gonna see that and be like, what? What? It's literally, it's literally gonna be the most funny thing in the world. Like, that's nope. the thing. Like, I, I want to make it fun. Where you guys got guys on a show where it's not more of an interview format. Where like you guys make it more nonchalant, where it's like just more chilling and talking. But when you have okay. those guys on shows and it's like the same question: How's camp going? How's this going? How's that going? Yeah. Fighters get bored with that type of thing. I feel like game, the game show aspect like makes it a little fun for guys and makes them want to come on the show. Bro, so I, wait, what, wait, wait. How much? My favorite fuck thing, you, Stan. My fuck favorite thing you. was the you got to go find something when you make people oh. get up and go look for whatever they got. That's yeah. my favorite part that's of the show. A, that's a, that's the. But then that gets harder when guys are like when I had Darren Till on the show, he was driving, and then uh, Gilbert Burns uh, was at the gym. So it's like when I did that part, I, I was like, now I got to start asking guys, Joe, are you at the house or are you? At the gym, because it's like harder to, to make those things. That's yeah. the hardest thing about. Or them, like, they fucked up that game. day. That's if you go to Je- go on Jeopardy and you didn't learn that fucking that category, you fucked up that day. That, that's a good point. Yeah. So what I was gonna say is how much preparation goes into each show. All right, you're, you're not trying to do the same thing every show. You're trying to be creative and switch it up, and you know, with different things. How much? Yeah. Is it you're it's, just driving? You think of it, you're like, oh shit, let me jot that down, or you just off the top of your yeah, head. Yeah, a lot of it. it. A lot of it is I'll sit there writing in my notes, and then I'll sit there and like I'll usually like run it by my brother, I'm like, yo, you think this is funny or not funny? And then it's just like coming up with just like different ideas. Like I'll sit there and ask some guys, like, what do you think is a good idea? Like my mostly my brothers most of the time. I'm like, give me category ideas or other ideas, and then uh, I'll see what works because I did like five or six shows and I've changed up the categories a lot. So I feel like what categories work most, which ones are like the funnest I feel like. And it's fun just making the the pictures, I think, a lot. Because you put the filters on them and it makes just a lot funner. So like when the guys will see it. And then you don't have to go through that. Like a lot of the time when I had, when I'm closer with the guys, like I had CM Punk and Brandon Allen, they're like teammates of mine. So like I'll message them like, yo, what sports do you watch? Do you watch like football? You can get more specific. Yeah. And then Brandon Allen literally didn't watch, doesn't watch no sports. He's like, yeah, I used to watch NFL in 1997. I was like, <laughs> I don't like, I was like, what what does that even mean? Like, you want me to give you questions from 1997? I was like, all right. So I just had to keep all of them more specific toward MMA. So then I just started doing easier questions like pictures and stuff like that because you don't know which guy wants to pay attention, what like what kind of things they know about. And then <laughs> I'm not giving them any freaking prizes. So, like, right. you don't want them to come on the show and just be like, uh, like, just not saying anything, not excited about it. Right. So can you hit me and Stan – Best out of five right now. <laughs> if I had my pictures on me, I do. I actually, I'm making my pictures for tomorrow. Is it all pictures or? No, a lot of Are it is. Questions? Like, there's questions. I have questions on there. So I have like either trivia questions or like I'll say fun facts about a certain guy and then who's the guy. And then tomorrow's game show, I'm doing uh like, uh, la- it's like the category's last dance. So it's like this guy's retirement fight. Who is this guy's last retirement fight? So I'm coming up with those questions right now. And then a lot. there's another one where it's like, find this. So you have 30 seconds, first person to come back and find this wins. So like I say, like, find a sponge. So like right away, you're supposed to run with your phone, go get a sponge, and come back to the camera, show me you have a sponge. Well, we can't, like sponge. I can't, we can't run with our, oh, so that's. If you have a phone or if you have a, like, if you have a computer, like, all right, you go quick, go run and grab something. And then you have and to come back, back to the computer. Come back. Yeah. All right, so me versus Stan right now, or <laughs> uh, you guys would actually be good on the show. Like I'll put you guys on the show. Well, yeah, uh, the I'll show. Kick the shit, out of Stan. Bro, the shows. I'd kill you in trivia. You'd get me in. Fuck you, you. You'd get With me fighting. You yeah. would. You'd get me in. It en- could be anything, bro. You could do fight trivia. Trivia or knowledge, period. You would get me in entertainment. With you like running and fucking slipping and falling and shit. One thing that, bro, you would slip and fall, you fat. No, no, no. One thing I, yo, one thing I was dying about the other day. Who did we have on when you were soaking your feet and you ran and you slipped and fell as you were running out of the room? (laughs) That was that was a couple months ago. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Who soaks their feet during a podcast? But you see how we're doing things here. Well, hang on. At the time, I had 
Yo, I've had athletes' feet like nail fungus since like a senior in high school. I just got it fixed like three months ago, over like a like a six month like time period. <laughs> See, that's why. That's why. I, like, put that in your trivia that. show. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact: He's had athletes put since seventeen. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> or which or or you could do which menace yeah. no 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 which, which menace in yeah. the ufc yeah no no had I, athlete's foot since he was a senior in high school or you can give like Either a, me or michael johnson right or you can give a real trivia question and be like he's the all-time takedown leader at featherweight and he also has a, <laughs> also has had athlete athlete's foot <laughs> since he was 17 years old <laughs> <laughs> are you are you the take down leader in uh, featherweight? Yeah. Come on. Oh, okay. You know what? I am going to put that in my category for tomorrow. Yeah. That's hang on. Nobody's <laughs> going to get that. <laughs> Nobody's going to get that. And there, I, that I, I, Chad I had that. like five. I had like five or six clues. So like maybe the last clue would be like he has his own podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chad Mendes probably has his own podcast. Chad Mendes? No, he doesn't. Probably got some kind he of might, fucking hunting he, podcast. He, he okay, might. I'll say it's uh, about a podcast not about hunting. <laughs> because the thing is, with his psoriasis, people <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I can go to your feet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I that funny right now? Oh, <laughs> uh, this is funny. You're good. Thank you. <laughs> it's just, what? yo. That's how you need to do it, Bilal. You need to be like the all-time takedown leader. He's also had athlete's foot since he was 17. It's now cured. It's now cured. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. <laughs> and then be like, who is he? <laughs> no, I mean, if one of them get it, that would be hilarious. Uh, be like, what? Oh, my God. Hang on, because I think I'm a tough person to get, especially because I'm not – Relevant anymore? Oh. You can throw in. I have two kids. This might get people. Uh, fat Guinness Book of World Records for the fastest time to drink a liter of lemon juice through a straw. That might give it really? away. Yeah, it's right here. No dude. way. Uh, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, menace. How the heck do you get that? That was the thing I I wanted to say to you, menace. You need to adjust your camera so that way that's in the picture again. Yeah, well, I mean, we're just dude. I would wear that on my shirt. Ah, oh, that's hot. Is it backwards on the camera or? Probably. No, nah, it looks good. No, nah, it looks all right. Yeah, we're, just, we're doing it. We're over here against Book of World. Did you just record. randomly come up with that uh, record or? No. Uh, I, just, it's, well, I was in the right place at the right time type deal. Shit, now it's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to knock down my tower of G. Oh, Lord. What does right place at the right time mean when you're talking about drinking lemon juice through a what? straw? Exactly that. He was brought in right place, right time. The, the contest was made for someone else, and Dennis was brought in, and he just happened to be a professional athlete. Oh, the contest. Hey. And the ringer. He was supposed to just be there, and some other guy, they were like, oh, this guy is going to win. This guy, Furious uh. Pete. He's like a big YouTuber, video game guy. Furious Pete's his name. Yeah, okay. send him, just send him a link later, Stan. Yeah, well, I got to tell Bilal the story, and then G Fuel arranged it. They're a uh, what would you call G Fuel? Not a energy drink. I guess an energy drink company. Oh, okay. yeah, they are. Yeah, so they put on it, and they had a bunch of people there. I think they had Brittany Palmer. Did Brittany Palmer do the lemon juice menace? Nah, she was, she went back to the hotel room. Yeah, she wasn't about that life. But menace, they lined it up, and Dennis is a pro athlete, so he was like, "I'm gonna fucking win this." Well, no, I was like, I'll do it as a joke. I'll take a few sips, spit it on the guy next to me, and then I did a countdown blow out, and I said, you don't think I'm going to fucking bite down and give this hell. <laughs> At all costs, just just, just suck, you know? How much lemon juice was it? A liter. Oh, a liter? Yeah, which I had a liter of beer last night. I'm like, this is a lot. Well, you got to tell the story right. He fucked up the first time, so he had to drink another liter. 
What? Well, yeah, I drank I drank a liter and like, you know, at the bottom of like a solo cup, there's that like little rim. Yeah. So this bowl that I was drinking out of had that little rim. So I was like, I got to the bottom of the middle and I was like, done. Like, what? Did I win? You know? And the guy looks, he's like, oh, there's still a little bit in there. Like, sorry, I can't accept your like whatever. I was like, what? Bullshit. Fill it back up. And no then, way, uh, really? Yeah. So because they had they had this award thing without my name there. It was in the room. Yeah. I'm like, that's now that I know I can do it, that's coming home with me, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, how much time do I have to like before the next take? Like, well, we can't hang out here all day. I was like, I have an hour. Like, no, I'm like, sick. So I'm like, do I go throw up? What do I do? How do I try to like, you know? And I thought about throwing up. I'm like, man, that might just acid on acid coming out might just destroy my whole shit, you know? So like. So I tried to take a dump. I think I got a little bit out, peed a little bit. And like after 20 minutes, like, all right, you ready? Like it's now or never. I'm like, I guess. So I did it again. Just like bit down. just like, like just one shot, try to gulp the whole thing. And I did it. Wow. I mean, my first time was 20 seconds. The second time was 22 seconds. <laughs> but that's nuts. Guinness Buckle Roll Records. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, wow! Growing up, right? You've seen like in like in elementary school, you'd see the the Guinness Book of World Records, right? Some at some point, yeah. you're like, dude, like what? I could do something. I could do something to get in here. Yeah, and it just fell on my lap. I'm like, Dennis, you did say that when when you were fucking ten years old. You said you'd be the you know. So here's your here's your moment, and like eight mile. Hmm. <laughs> And he like do, do they message you if like somebody beats it like yo somebody beat your record? Um, I get tweets and shit. I mean, maybe somebody did. I don't fucking know. I mean, all I know like you got to just like That's if you won matters. the belt and then like retired, I guess, or didn't watch fighting. Someone would be like, someone else has a belt. Like, yeah, you're like Frank Shamrock. Oh, That's right here. You're like Frank Shamrock back in the day. You're like, I got a bunch of UFC belts back here, but yeah. But on to some fighting. One of the funny things that I got cu- I got cut off with before with Menace was uh, you giving Jared shit for liking Sean Brady's picture. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these guys had no loyalty. I'm sitting there like, I would never. Yeah, I'm like, come on, Jared. What's up, bro? Like, you seriously doing it? But I feel bad because they're all like friends. Like, Paul Felder's like, was really hurt about this whole thing. Paul Felder's really close friends with uh, Sean Brady. And he like messaged me like, Bro, seriously, man, like, why do you guys have to fight each other? Like, all the 170 pounders have to be used to against each other. I'm like, I don't know. He's like, man, and they got me working that card, but they said I don't have to work that fight. They said I could go to the back during that fight. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, fighting's crazy. Look at Gilbert versus Usman right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm like, me and China aren't teammates, so I don't really care. Yeah. But you guys are training together, though. No, no, I never trained with Sean. Oh, no? Okay. No, no. Jared and uh, Paul just know him from Philly, I guess, and the whole uh, uh, okay. Gracie yeah, uh, family. Him. But yeah, I don't know. Never been on our show, so you know who's going to win that fight? Bilal. <laughs> All day. But even uh, you're down in South Florida right now. Have you ever been to Florida before? I've been to Florida. I just never trained down there before. Okay. So how is H Kickboxing treating you or Sanford, whatever they call it at the moment? Man, really nice. Super nice uh, gym. And then uh, just crazy how much stuff they have here. Like, literally, we went – we had a hard practice, and then we went to the cold tub, hot tub, and, like, a body uh, recovery room. They got – that gym literally has everything you need. You don't have to know. It's kind of like the UFC PI, honestly. Damn. Yeah, I've yeah, seen – Yeah, they got a, a big room of good guys in there, so. Yeah. I've seen Henry posting it on his Instagram, and the place looks amazing. Yeah, I'm looking at it like, man, this place is – like, you literally don't have to go nowhere else. Like, it's all in one room. The biggest thing about me in Chicago is literally I have to drive from one gym to the next gym to the next gym. So, it's like, oh, I get wrestling here, striking here, grappling here. So, it's a lot of driving. Which is uh, sometimes cool a little bit. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. There's, there's pros and cons of both because, like, when you're going to the same place every day, you're like, fuck, like, this place – Hard work happens here. Or like there's something here at one point that you're like, oh, that wasn't fun. 
yeah. where maybe, you know, on a striking day, a pad day, when you go in that building, you're like, all right, this is going to be nice. And like, yeah. And jujitsu over here, like, all right, I can mentally prepare to go there and grind. But if you have a one stop shop, less driving, because sometimes the drive, you're like, fuck this. I don't feel like driving over there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it makes, I feel like it makes you tougher sometimes. And then also, like, for me, I like to do a lot of cross training. So I, I like to get different looks and go to different gyms. There's a lot of guys that are afraid to go to different places. Because, oh, man, they're going to see me or they're going to look – what if they know how I fight or they find something out about me? And I'm like, honestly, once you're in the UFC, like, people are going to sit there and watch your tapes. It's not going to be much that right. you could change or something that you're going to hide. So, like, for me, if I could go down here, like you said, get uncomfortable, spar with a bunch of other guys, train with a bunch of different looks, it makes me eat better for my fights. Like, if you're done a just tournament and you do a just tournament, you're like – like, you do after one match, your arms are, like, dead and, like – because you're in that competition feeling where it's like you roll all the time, but like the fact that it's a tournament now, you're like, man, my body just feels like it's in a, a different zone. And I'm then, shaking like, my know, head. Yes, I've never done it. I've done a jiu-jitsu no. match, but okay, I do understand what you're saying, though. Yeah, like you're just in a different room, and then especially when you go into a different gym, like it's a different feeling of sparring or a different feeling of wrestling, where it's like now you know guys are gonna want to go a little harder with you because oh, you're you're the UFC guy in my gym. Yep. But that's the cool thing about this gym, actually, is where, like, none of these guys had an ego, where, like, none of them wanted to prove themselves. You know when you go to gyms, the guys want to prove themselves against you or, like, yeah. go super hard? Like, that that was the cool thing about this gym. I like that. None of these guys were actually like that. So it was, it was cool. It was nice. And then you get to go with different guys and uh, just different uh, styles. So it was cool. I liked it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also like how at – I'm going to say H kickboxing or whatever, just because um, they, like – ease into sparring like i've gone with gilbert burns on like the third like light round and i was like this is a full-blown fist fight but <laughs> but uh no but for the most part it's nice and oh, easy bad, what's that no I, I had a cancel out of call yeah i heard you now oh um but uh no that's that's one point i've always made in every fight camp was to go somewhere a little bit uncomfortable and you know because the fight is going to be the opposite of that you know what i mean yeah go somewhere where someone's you know because when you when you're training your own gym the coaches are looking out for you like yo no no no, go with him or no you're too new whatever like you know you'll get good rounds with him whatever you'll be safe but you know you go train you go to another gym where people are like who's this motherfucker how long you here for okay you yeah, know? exactly. And then when you're going with your same guys at your gym, like you're like you know your this guy's style, you know how he punches. Right. You know, you both are like, hey, we we went a little hard yesterday, so let's go lighter today. So you both yep. had that like attitude with each other. Yep. And then it's it's just a lot different. And then when you go to a different gym, like you don't know how this guy spars, you don't know how this guy's style, and uh, yeah, you you just don't know it. It's like it's kind of like a fight where you don't know what's gonna happen with it. So yep. that's what I like about it. That's what's cool about it. And then I'm getting snowing comfortable in Chicago being right now, and it's yeah, it's snowing in uh, Chicago right now. So it's cool to be down here in the sun, in the freaking sun. Yeah. So oh, yeah. real quick, what do you got, Stan? Well, I was going to say also another thing. The other day we were celebrating Bilal getting moved back into the top fifteen because they dropped out Leon Edwards. <laughs> that lasted for like eighteen hours, maybe right? <laughs> it was literally like the fun. Like when I saw it, like I'm. I'm not, I, I sat there. My boys messaged me like at 6 a.m. in the morning, like, oh, congrats, you're in the rankings. And I looked at it. I was like, Leon, I was not in there, dude. That, that ain't right. And then, you know, I had like my brothers text me, oh, we got in there. I told you we get it. I'm like, dude, Leon Edwards is out. Like, it was somebody else that was out. I would be I would be more proud of it because there's a lot of guys that don't even belong in there. But yeah. Leon Edwards belongs in the rankings. Leon Edwards should be ranked. So, like, for me, I knew they were going to put him back in there. I knew it was like, unless they cut him. Like, yeah, it's just a, there and it was a like a, Yeah, and they used me literally as a pawn. They're probably like, yeah, let's, who do not we care about? This guy's probably going to get excited about being in the rankings, but we'll take him out <laughs> the next day anyway. So let him get happy for a day. They could have put anybody in there, but they chose me because they don't care about me. But even nah, you, I'm playing. you posted like, don't worry, Leon, I'll give I'll give you a chance to get your spot back or something like that. Yeah, but that's like- the, yeah. <laughs> like you, you'll sit there and have guys that are say, oh, man, I, I can't believe I made it to the rankings, yada, yada, yada. And, like I could have made one of those posts, but it was like I knew they were going to put Leon Edwards back in there once he got a fight. 
That's why I said I didn't care. If I could get a fight out of it, yo, Leon, you want your ranking back, come and get it. I mean, uh, I, I, I called that. I knew that's where that was the best fitting fight was him versus Chimaev. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like for him, honestly, it's a it's a it's a dumb fight because you you're like he has really nothing to gain from it. If he fought if he fought nope. like He'll gain more attention from it because everybody wants to know this Chimaev guy. But yeah, so there Chimaev's is some bad gain from it. No, yeah, he he's gonna gain call his shot. I think next fight. This is yeah, but it's like but Chimaev is a worse matchup for him than Wonderboy. I think. Oh yeah, I don't Chimaev, think he, like, I don't. He's not gonna he win saw, the fight. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's Chimaev, not gonna win. Though, well, I don't think he's gonna. You think Leon loses? I think Leon loses. Yeah, that's what I said. I said Chimaev will take him down. Chimaev's gonna down the yeah, whole round. Grind like, him out. Nelson held uh, Leon Edwards down when they fought. And you, you saw, like, he was getting frustrated when Gunnar Nelson was on top of him. What do you think this rush is going to do? Uh, the only thing I think is uh, plays a factor in is the five rounds. See how Tamayev uh, lasts when he gets five rounds. And if Leon Edwards plays a little smarter the first couple rounds, doesn't get uh, hurt because Tamayev comes out like a freaking truck. The what first if Tamayev takes him on the first round? That'd be insane. Yeah, that mean. I'd be like, thing, give too. this man a title right now. Yeah, but that's the thing, too, like, he really like it, you saw the first guy fought Phillips, where literally has zero takedown defense ever, the worst I've ever seen in my life. And then his last fight, Phillips got taken out by the the Asian guy with ease. You watch that fight? Yeah, yeah. And the Asian guy broke a record for ground and pound strikes. And you're like, oh well, is this Asian guy the Asian Chimaev? But like the thing for Chimaev beating Gerald Mershart, he's my teammate. And Gerald Mershart is like literally one like one of the best, uh, well rounded guys I know, and. For like literally just to catch him that early, where you could say it's everything worked well for him that fight because it's a it's a fight, so all it takes is one punch. All right. So like you really couldn't get a good read of how good Chimaya really is because I mean yeah. he landed one punch, so you could say oh this is the next coming of Mike Tyson and Khabib, or you could say man this guy he just landed the punch in the right moment at the right time, and let's really see how good he is if he gets past his first round. Like I can't you can't really tell how good he is until he does one full round in the UFC. I think again, like I guess a tough guy. Like the first two guys don't really count. Gerald was a, a real test, but like you just caught him one punch, and anybody can get caught. All it takes is one punch in the right spot, and you're out. This is true. Cardio is always the question for anybody, especially at the top level. But this guy Chimaev, everyone's saying he's legit. Yeah, the UFC's oh, yeah. pretty good at putting their all their ducks on. Like, yep, this guy is him, and we're gonna promote him. The only person that they sucked with that was uh Sage Northcutt, but like I saw right through that shit. I'm like he's just muscular. Oh my god. Even that. Have you guys have you guys seen Sage Northcutt recently? No, no. what is he? Three hundred pounds? Of of H G H or whatever the fuck he's on. He looks tremendous. he is he has like the big jaw now. He's like sauced out of his face. Really? I yeah, know, he's always, uh, he's always is he still fighting one seventy? Crazy. He's always been jacked, but right now he looks way extra. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he he almost died his last fight, right? Yeah, yeah. the Andre Kuzmo. So the only thing he him. can really do is like work, at, like lift. Get tremendous. Yeah, I think he broke a lot of bones in his face. So I love how Stan was like, "That's not right. They shouldn't have put him against him." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" They're giving the dude so much damn money, they should put him against a fucking No. Lion. I'm saying Kus if they shouldn't have gave him Kusmo if they wanted him to win. If they wanted to build up and uh, come to America and market him. They gave him a guy yeah, that it's they like they use his but, like likability, like, yo, we got some real people here. They gave him a fight like Yeah, oh, I oh, can see that too. Oh, you do karate? Then, when you, once you're getting to that point where you're getting paid that much money, like even guys in the UFC where like like a Chris Weidman or like Anthony Pettis, when they're like on a little losing streak, and then but you have to keep giving them the high ranked guys. They don't get no easy fights because they had the title before and they're they're at that pay scale. But you're like, dude, let let them get a couple wins, let them build up again. But they're like, no, we're paying them this much money. Yeah, we're gonna keep giving them these freaking monsters. And you're like, dude, this guy can't catch a break. It's same. I feel like even with like Darren Till, like I don't think Darren Till has an easy fight in his last four, and he's had some. I mean, he's been, he's had some good fights, but you're like. Once you get that pay scale, like none of your fights are easy. They're not going to let you build up to knocking people out easily again. And well, you're not going to get those finishes. Even we could say Philip sucks, the guy who Chima had fought. There are very few, if any, easy fights in the UFC. Phillips is an easy fight. Phillips is an easy fight for Chimaev. Yeah, but that's what okay. I'm saying. There's a few easy fights, possibly, but for the most part, 
All right, I think we lost Menace, but we'll see if he comes back. But even we could segue into Khabib, something that we didn't touch on because we started a little late. But Khabib retiring, your fellow Muslim brother. So that's obviously a big thing as Khabib is Khabib, but you, you being a Muslim as well, he's the guy. Like yeah. Someone yeah. you look Honestly, up to. Honestly, like, sure. one of those where like he's like a, a role model to so many people. And like even people that probably never watched fighting, like he brought so many eyes to the game just because how much of a Muslim he is and how much he brings his religion into the fighting with them. So like we're Khabib. yeah, Khabib. And then where you guys got got like John Jones who oh I should be pound for pound. Like literally like seeing him the last couple of days, it's like I'm looking at him like, man, is this guy really that butt hurt that Khabib got the pound for pound uh, number one thing? Which but, is like, it's, when you add it's, it, a, it's it's Apples and oranges, pound for pound. Yeah, like not. It's a fairy tale. Fucking, don't make no sense. Yes, like rankings in general don't make sense. But like for Khabib, like he just retired. He just said he retired. He said his, his goal was to be the pound for pound. Let him have his shine for a week at least. Okay, you're gonna be the pound for pound next week when they Khabib retire officially retires and they take him out of the rankings. So like relax. Like you're just showing. Like you're acting like a little brat. Like oh, I did this. But where? How do you really feel about it, though? Is Khabib the pound for pound in your eyes, or is John Jones? If you're looking at it and professional athlete all together, like Khabib's never lost a round. Khabib's never lost a round, and he's never gotten hurt. He's never had any problems with PDDs. John Jones had a, like three or four close fights where people could say, "Oh, he lost this or he lost that," against some tough guys, and. Just the last three guys that could be finished were a lot tougher than John Jones' last four guys, and even John Jones, where you guys say uh, he was so dominant in his uh, in his early days, but like he, if you look really think about it, he's fighting guys that were like on their way out uh, when he dominated. Rampage, there are some great dominated. arguments for sure. Yeah, and then when you go to the outside of fighting aspect of it, where Khabib's never had anything done anything wrong, and you've had John Jones and a lot of crazy situations where you're like, well, when you say pound for pound, is it pound for pound just in fighting or pound for pound and professional athlete? Yeah. Like Muhammad, now, bring it all to like pound for pound, gonna, Ma- you, like all time great Muhammad Ali status, like where you transcended racial lines and shit like that and blah, 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 or best in fighting or even yeah, like exactly. role model, like John Jones isn't putting out the best, but, he is the best. Yeah. He, he's probably the best in fighting. Yeah, John Jones. Overall, I think Khabib's a specialist. But if you're if you're looking at it as in like, yo, if I got a six foot six Khabib against a six foot six John but, Jones, but who's exactly that's the question. That's the also the thing. You can't really do pound for pound, or you can, but like you have to come up with a criteria. Khabib though is the greatest lightweight of all time, one hundred percent. Yeah. But, like, if you look at Khabib, he's walking through punches of guys. What is John Jones going to do? The sidekick? I mean, if we're talking about if they're both fighting each other, same weight, same size, the way Khabib's style is, he he comes at you hard. I think attributes-wise, Khabib's wrestling better than John Jones. If you think Say about again? It, like, attributes, like, if you're looking at a video game, Khabib's wrestling is better than John Jones. Wrestling. MMA wrestling or wrestling wrestling? MMA wrestling. Close. I think John Jones is. Un- John Jones got taken down by Gustafson. What? Yeah, Khabib got taken down by Ab- Abel Trujillo. No, he didn't. Khabib got taken down by Abel Trujillo and someone else. I took Khabib He's down. He's not got taken down by Abel Trujillo, did he? Yeah. Abel I- was a bad. Was a good wrestler. Yeah, I mean, Abel Trujillo took down Khabib. I don't think so. <laughs> I'll put the record on Abel. Abel got Fucking... taken down like 25 times. Yeah. What's this thing? It took me down. I got taken down by lesser guys, but because I was like, anticipating a stand up fight. When John Jones fought Guffiston, he was expecting, uh, expecting kickboxing, like stand up kickboxing. Abel took him down, and I think T Bow might have took him down, but he popped right back up. Well, I'll give you that. But and both those guys are better wrestlers than Gustafsson. But Abel that Abel did take him down, and then Khabib went, "Oh, so you want to wrestle?" And then took him down like twenty something times. John Jones took down Daniel Cormier. 
Yeah, but. And Multiple wait, wait, times. and Gustafsson surprised John Jones. That's what I'm hit. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. I got taken down by what's his face? Gustaf- the vegan wait, fucking Gustafsson also took down DC. Vegan? Now Andre Feely. I got taken down by Feely. Feely took you down? Come on, dude! <laughs> A couple times. <laughs> he he just Feely snuck me. Good at sneaking in those takedowns. But, His last fight yeah. against Jordan. Like he he was taking him down with ease. I was like, why don't you just take him down earlier? Like he made it a striking war. That was a good fight, yeah. him versus Jordine. Yeah, that was a really good fight. I was I was surprised by that. But Feely He's fighting this weekend, right? Feely, against Mitchell? Feely is, yeah, that's a tough yeah, one. Yeah, Bryce. Bro. That's a good one. The way Mitchell How does it go. The way Mitchell made Charles Rosa look, it was I like Oh, if I, Mitchell takes down, I would imagine he taps him out, right? But Mitchell's stand up is so trash. Like trash. literally Charles Rosa hit him with a head kick. Yeah, but Charles I, Rosa probably didn't know that he hit him with a head kick because his strike is so bad. But his ground game like, looked uh, really good. His ground game looked good against them, but I don't know. I think Feely's going to be smarter at because Feely switches stances a lot. He's good on the outside. He's a lot longer than him, I think. Yeah, and Bryce Mitchell gets hit a lot. I think. Yes. Yeah. Feely like, also he piano. P- he's also a piano belt pizza slice belt in jujitsu. <laughs> what? <laughs> Doesn't he have like a piano belt with like pizza pepperoni slices on it or some shit? Oh, Feely? Yeah. yeah. That's his rank in jiu-jitsu. That's how they yeah. do it in uh I believe it's Joe Joe Jitsu. Joe I mean, and, and he he the belt, piano? So he's dealing with wrestlers. Joe Benavidez, I think, is his jiu-jitsu coach. Or no, he's not. No, we just not. trained in Vegas now. I think our Joe they got ben- Holdsworth now. It might, it's either Holdsworth or Benavides. Um, I'm Benavides had some- Holdsworth. Benavides Holdsworth, had- and wait, wait. then there's um Benavides had something to do with it. Him getting a the piano. I just think it was like a. I think it's just a joke. Those guys are like jokesters. Yeah, yeah. But that's what it. Yeah, was. I think Philly wins this one. I've I, I've watched uh, Mitchell fight outside of the UFC against uh, lesser guys that I know. And uh, like he went to war with them because he couldn't take them down. So if he if he can't take Philly down, I think it's uh, I mean even against Rosa, Rosa was like just accepting the takedown. It's not like he had to be takedowns against Rosa. Rosa was just falling down to his back. Yeah, that I was mean, tough. Control him on the stand. ground. Yeah, we like Rosa. Rosa's our we boy. We had man. Rosa on the show like oh two weeks before. He's uh, like, dude, I'm a black belt with like a higher jiu-jitsu guy than this guy's black belt. Like like this guy's not gonna touch me. And then we're like. We didn't stand like double down, like, yep, he said it, like he's got this. <laughs> like I felt the confidence. And then we watch him yeah. like, what? What what's happening right now? It's <laughs> the, the, actually a good card. Bobby Green is back this weekend as well. Yeah. Dude, he's, like, he's literally gonna have fight four fights in June. That's crazy. And, Bobby Green? Yeah. Yeah, Bobby Green. And he was retired. Going into 2020. Well, that's how crazy it switches, right? I tell people it's all about momentum. It's literally four fights, four fight win streak, and now he probably getting the rankings if he wins this one. And you're like, dang, I'm taking advantage of this COVID. And I think Kevin Holland's on his card too, ain't he? Kevin Holland is on this, this is card like his as third well. Or fourth fight. We got Bobby Green versus Tiago Moises. Greg Hart. the card right now, Stan? So we'll go Bobby Green versus Tiago Moises. I'm going to go Bobby yeah, Green in that Bobby one. all day. All day. I mean, Moises is like good like against, legit uh, gangster. He caught that leg lock on, uh, what's it called? That was a pretty sick leg lock on Michael Johnson. Yeah, Michael Johnson. Didn't Michael Johnson drop him right before it or had him in trouble right before it? I think too? Michael Johnson killed him the whole first round. Yeah. In the second round, dude just pulled guard and pulled just got him a leg lock. Yeah. I think Michael Johnson's in like a dark place right now. Yeah. You think so? I hit yeah, him up. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man, I'm just, you know how it is. I'm just like, it's just, you know, MMA. I'm in, I'm in, you know, I'm in this dark place. I'm just do- doing, I'm like, what? You want to, like, dude, I'll talk with you. Like, I've been there yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what people don't understand. Literally, it's like the highest of highs when you're winning. But when you lose, oh, like. And he's, he said that, in other words, in the text. Yeah. Yeah, like nobody really. And then nobody really knows what you're going through too. Like even in your family too. Like that. Like you want to sit there and put on a good face for them. But like when you lose, you're like, man, I need to get this fight back. But then you're like, you start thinking, man, what if I lose two in a row? And then once you get that two yeah. in a row, you're like, damn, if I lose one more, man, what the? I'm out. What's next? Yeah, I'm out. There's no way. And then you then you lose that one. You're like, for me, I lost the three. And then yeah. I'm like, if I lose this one, I'm out. I lost the fourth. I was like, I yeah, didn't even retire. I, and yeah, then what's, what's left? 
Well, and then I went through some, like, I retired in my head after my fourth loss. Like, I'm done with this shit. Not this is bullshit. Yeah. And then I went through some shit in my life, like a breakup. And I was like, I need a fight. Someone needs to get hurt. Yeah. But that's that's how it turns, though. Like, you sit there thinking, I never, like, literally after my first loss ever, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm done fighting. Like, I'm not good enough if you lose one fight. Mine like, too. You're, you're sitting at, right? You think you suck. And you're like. I was 4-0 and and amateur, all finishes, 7-0 and o pro, and then I lost to Drew Frickett, Fickett. I didn't know who he was at the time. Do you know who Joe? Yeah, Drew yeah, yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. Didn't know who he was at the time. I lose to him, but, like, he had me in a rear naked choke, but, like, wasn't choking me, but I tapped because I just didn't want to get hurt because the where I was fighting, the organization I was fighting was, like, uh, they owed fighters from the last card money, uh, and, like, there was no ambulance there. So I was like, let me just – I already made 15 grand. Let me just – and I tapped, and I was like, what the f- – I was so fucking mad at myself because I dropped him. Bang. Yeah. He drops down. He called me down. I'm like, what? Like, I'm going to fuck you up now. And I went yeah. right into his shit. <laughs> like, uh, uh, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Wow. I was it was the uh Shine fights where it was a three night tournament. Three okay. fight tournament. Yeah. And I got him in the semis. I beat Shannon Gurgity in the first round. And wait, you have I'm fighting is like twenty six and and ten. And I'm like, what? Menace was on like day- Menace had some fights, but he was like jujitsu day three. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I oh, mean that's funny. Jujitsu, like the guys I was training with, like my wrestling was better than their jujitsu, so it just didn't work on me. So like, dude, you gotta learn this triangles and and I'm like, you can't do it to me. So <laughs> yeah, why do I need to? Like you hit it on me when I didn't know anything. Now yeah. I know how not to get into them. So why do I need to? Drew Fickett, there, there's levels like every there's levels to this shit. You Drew know? Fickett waved you on, and you were like, oh, you just fucked up. I just knocked you down. I'm gonna kill you now. You are so stupid. Yeah. That was a very and long. People were like, "Yo, why'd you go to his guard? Like that dude, like knocked out Josh Koscheck." I was like, "What? Josh Koscheck was my hero. That was Koscheck's first well, Josh loss. Josh Koscheck was killing him, and then he like flying need him in like the third. Oh wow, really? Yeah. So I was like. Dude, my first loss is the someone who Wait, Josh Koscheck, Koscheck, like, like, I can let that. Koscheck first loss was in the UFC. That was Koscheck's first loss in the UFC, yeah. Drew Fickett. Oh, that was in the UFC? Yeah. Yeah. Way ah, okay. way back in the day. We need to get Drew Fickett on the show. He I've tried to find him. He is a ghost. <laughs> well, I think he's like a newborn like Christian. Probably. I, I know he went down like a road of like drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Like, and he had a he, he had a real dirtbag life. Like oh wow really yeah well he's a pioneer fighter all of them did that yeah. right like and I'm not saying dirt bag. Well, all those and guys like, I'm not right saying there. I'm not saying dirt bag in the w- worst way I'm saying dirt bag in just had some trials and tribulations if you will no no I call Jared a dirt bag all the time Jared Gordon Jared Gordon esque yes <laughs> well yeah Jared's like your he was fighting with you know when these guys first started fighting you know. Yeah, he tells me about a tournament he did in Mexico. It was like a one day tournament. He said, mm. "Yeah, I won like ten thousand dollars or something," and they never paid me. He said he won it. Who? They, they never he was gave for him a Team checkbook. USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro, yeah got uh, paid. I was like, "Wow." Pro, pro Cop was on that too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jared did win. Yeah, that's crazy. Like he did a tournament. Like I fought in Mexico. That was supposed to be my pro debut. I de- went down there. Literally, they didn't have an opponent for me. So I, I was literally down there. And then they were like, "Oh, we're bringing them in tomorrow." And I was like, okay. And then literally it's my first pro fight. I'm in Mexico. So I'm like excited about it. And then uh, literally I won by TKO. And then the guy was like, oh, we're going to take you to the airport now. Uh, do you want what money I have in my pocket? Or do you want me to – I'll just send you $800 in the mail. And I was like, how much do you have in your pocket? He said, oh, I got like $150. I was like, well, I'll just wait for the $800 then. And the guy never sent me the $800. And the, it never went on my record. I was like, it was literally the worst freaking – uh, promotion ever, but it was cool because I got a free trip to Miami. I mean, uh, Mexico. Yeah, because how old were you? I was uh twenty one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I was like, it was cool uh, the whole situation. But then now you're thinking about it, like, man, I really yeah. could use that TKO uh, on my record. 
<laughs> well, no, you know what gets me kind of jazzed up is, yeah, I said it, jazzed up, is the fights to get in the house and in the house don't count on your record. Yeah, that's, like, that's yeah. I fought high end dudes. What yeah, do you mean? To get in a, yeah, one of my guys, he fought in the Mexico Ultimate Fighter and he has like three knockouts on the show and they don't put it on his record. I'm like, man, yeah. We were just I put them on mine. I add them on. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, man, yeah, has yeah, a, I, would do I mean, it sure. says, you know, a, real and a, a big eight. win, a, t- a Jimmy Rivera TKO. Yeah. That's, oh, you be able, oh, yeah, that was a good fight on the show, right? Yeah. That was a TKO yeah. on the show? Denied the man early access. Oh, nice. <laughs> I remember we watched that, like Menace had the whole Long Island MMA team go watch that at like Miller's Ale House. And uh, he got fucked up the first round. There, everyone's in there looking at me like, there's no why way. Are we, why are we here? You're getting fucking cremated. I'm just like. So wait, Bilal, you know the ultimate fighter. I watched this yeah. fight. And after the first round, I'm like, oh, so Dennis loses this fight and comes back later in the season because someone gets hurt. Like, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't win this fight, you know. But he came when you, when you got out of the when you got out of the house. You you didn't tell nobody, or did you like sneak and tell like a couple of your close friends? Well, so uh, Alle- uh, allegedly, hypothetically, yeah, my buddy. I get back to the gym. You know, Ryan Flair, right? Yeah. He's like, so how would you do? And I'm like, I did all right. He's like, how would you do? I'm like, <laughs> pretty good. He's like, you you won, didn't you? I was like, I don't, I don't know. And I did like a smile. I was like, you, you're in the finals, aren't you? And I'm like, I, dude, you know. I, I'm pretty yeah. easy to read. Like, they know me because they met me. Like, I would come back, like, like ready to commit suicide if, if yeah. it wasn't, you know. Yeah. I wasn't in the finals, you know. But don't you got to tell your team that, yo, we're training for the finals? Or do they, like, yo, we're. we're yeah, I think, no, they tell you that. It's just like, don't go on Twitter and be like, yo, I'm in the finals. Don't yeah, go, you know you are, yeah. Or don't tell anyone that will do that, you know? Yeah. That would be grabby if you told somebody and they're like, hey, guess what? I got the inside scoop. I know what's happening. Yeah. Which I think it somehow leaks eventually. So but here. Go ahead, man. next fight? I was just going to say, yeah, 34 minute segue into the number two fight on the card <laughs> <laughs> Maurice Green versus Greg Hardy. So now, Maurice, Greg Hardy should win this fight on athleticism. Maurice Green is that guy that Volante was killing. I know. I saw. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, right? Literally, I'm like, come on. Volante's such a cool guy. And I'm like, man, I wanted to see him win just because he's so cool. Yeah, we want we were pulling hard for Volante yeah, in that fight. But Bilal, you know how it is. You lose a fight, like you are not trying to hear from, from anybody. Like I almost wanted, like Gian's one of my boys, but I just know it's a weird. I gotta wait like probably like a year before I'm like, remember when you gave up to fucking <laughs> triangle on the ground? You know, like you can't. It's still he needs to have a couple more fights before I'm like, remember you lost that fucking scrub. That you're killing. <laughs> All you're like, he, needs, he, not... needs to win. he needs to win one before you can bring that up. Yeah. That's like the <laughs> whole I mean, that's well, going like, to heavyweight. But wait a minute. That is a move, though. Bilal, I don't know. We, I think we talked about it. He's never caught you, but that is Ali Abdelaziz's move. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's literally, literally when I first started rolling with him, and he, he'll literally try that on me. I'm like, what is he doing? And then I like, I'll see him hitting other guys in a roll, and I'm like, so I'm wondering what is he? What is he? When he first did it to me, I'm like, does he think I'm a scrub? When he tried it, I was like, all right, you're never gonna catch me with this. But then a lot of like when that happened, everybody started posting it like, oh, he caught me, he caught me, like all these big names, Gaslin, all these guys, and Ali's like, yeah, say the truth, guys, say the truth. And he has all in a group chat, like all of his dominance fighters. It's like we we're all on a group chat and like WhatsApp with like big like Frank Yager and everybody, and like he'll post it on there like. Hey guys, I know you guys saw that submission. Admit who did it. Admit admit who did it first. And then all around, the oh man, that's your move. That's your move. So it's so funny. Yeah, but that Maurice Green is like on UFC, being like, you know, it brings me a lot of pride to be the only, the only the second guy in the UFC to pull up the submission. Yeah, because the fucking submission doesn't really work. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> the reason why it works is if you take a break and someone like locks it in tight, and you're like, oh, what? Uh oh! Too late to readjust. 
Yeah, like it didn't make no sense. And I'm like, come on. Don't you Volante. just have your chin like over their shoulder, like chilling, where they're like, all right. Well, Volante tapped more to exhaustion in that fight. That's what I think. A bad spot. Yeah. He probably was in a bad spot getting choked, but like he could have, yeah. he could have almost like sat on his hip and took now, all the pressure off. Bilal what I tell can, people is like, Bilal they, they could definitely know. attest to this. Like when you're in a fight. And someone wraps their arms around your neck and can be, they don't even have to have it. Your energy gets like, you get very panicky where like, shit, this might, the fight could end right now. And like this like surge of panic, even though you're actually not choking at the moment, happens and it fucks your shit up. Blah, am I wrong here? Yeah, yeah, no, you're you're right. And then Unless, like, too, like, a guy's got your back, and you're like, all right, I'm good here. I know I'm good here. But, like, when they get it, you're, only your chin's blocking, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And then when you're tired in there, like, people don't know how, like, yes. when you're having that, that's, like, the that's the worst fear for me ever. Like, I don't even care about getting knocked out, getting split open, like, just being tired in the in, a, in the cage. Like, when I was an amateur, like, I would, all I would do is lift weights. I was, like, I was literally, like, a bodybuilder. And then, like, I had an amateur fight where, like, I was literally gassed out after the first round. I couldn't even lift my arms because I just had so much muscle on me. And I'm like, dude, I'm never lifting weights again. All I'm doing is cardio from now on. Like, I literally just, like, laid on the guy. It was, like, the most probably the most boring fight I ever had in my life. Where I just, like, grabbed the guy and took him down. I was just, like, lay on him just because I couldn't even move my arms. And I was like, man, I never want to have that feeling again. Yeah. That's the only thing you can control in a fight. Yeah. Is your cardio. That's something yeah. – we- that's – Something I've seen Menace get, I guess you could say, mad about many times. Like he'll see someone he knows lose or just even watch a fight where he's rooting for a guy. And if their cardio falters and fails, he goes, what the fuck? You know, that's the one thing that as a fighter. token, Bilal can contest this. You get punched in the body or you get dropped or you get put in one of these chokes. I try to relate it to like a like a Tekken or or Mortal Kombat. Like your bar is this much, you get dropped, you're at fifty percent gas, and it could be within like the first minute. You get dropped to yeah. a body shot, you're like at a quarter gas that you now have to make work until you could fucking get back to your corner and make it happen again. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that power meter is literally going down. You're like, and then people don't understand. Like when you like. They're, Oh man, they got the sissy. He dropped to a body shot. I'm like, dude, if you get hit in the right spot, like you, there's literally nothing you could. There's that you can't control it. Like you just break. I, I don't know if it's happened to me or not. But you, do you know Chris Algieri? Yeah, I know that guy. He body shot me one time in sparring, and I just like just held my breath because there was no air there. Anyways, I took two hard steps forward praying that he didn't return more fire and he like circled that and i was like because oh. if he threw anything yeah. else i would have just been like but i've watched people get punched and just like i i don't know if i don't know what that has to if i didn't get hit in the right spot or yeah well while we're talking about body shots Bilal, this might be the last time i see you virtually Menace might be looking for a new co-host soon because I don't know if you saw Bilal. I made a very poor bet. You're lucky that Muslims don't drink alcohol because I drank a couple of two, a, one too many Great South Bays, and I made a bet with Tyrone Spong about a body shot. I took Justin Gaethje. I just thought he would be the perfect storm. I thought Khabib, you can't win every one. I guess you can, Khabib. You fucking did it. I tried to give you, I tried to give you like odds to it, like and here, no, no. Tyrone. Well, Bilal, have you ever drank before? Or you never no. you never drink as a Muslim. So most no. most beers are whatever. Four five percent. Most beers are four percent, right? Four and a half. Four and a half percent. So these other beers that I had were more powerful. So I drank two eight, eight and a half. I drank two of them and then just was like Tyrone Spong, body shot, be great content. Instagram, be awesome. And then I started thinking about it. I texted Menace like, yo, I'm having real anxiety about this. Like, usually I'll place a bet on a fight and it'll give me that little buzz. Like, oh, I want to watch this fight. It's interesting. Yeah. I was watching Khabib Gaethje with my health on the line. Like, Tyrone Spong, body shot. I'm not going to 
it's not going to go well, so. Well, Tyrone also, because I tried, like, hey, Tyrone, when you punch him. And I told you to shut up. <laughs> like, punch him in the organs, not in the ribs. And he's like, no, nah, your friends will be pissing blood. I was like. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, he seems like the type of guy that won't, be, won't take it nice. Like, oh, okay. oh no. You guys are recording it, too? I'm going to go serious. Super nice, but he's going to go yeah. serious and hard. He's like, I'm going to let you, super, with a smile, I'm going to let you know you're going to piss blood. Like, you're going to get fucked up. All right. <laughs> I made a bad bet, but. Hey, that- what was amazing is he accepted the bet before Stan finished it. He's like, Tyrone, if Gaethje wins, I buy a shot you. If, and then he goes, yep. Done. <laughs> yep. I and think, Stan's right. like, I didn't finish. If-, if only I was witty enough to switch it to, I get your car. You know, or something like that. You know, <laughs> like if Which, Justin, hang on, I I think he still would have been like, "Yep." If Justin, no, but I could have. I said, "If Justin," I Gaethje, know he still would have said, "Yep." When do you got to take this body shot? When I get down to Florida. So even I'm gonna try to segue it into maybe we can get menace down there. We got to see what the COVID protocols or worst case, I'm just gonna shoot down there and die. Luckily, you've seen this facilities, Sanford MMA. Hopefully, they got some doctors there and some. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, I was thinking it'd be good if Stan did it in front of a hospital. Sanford MMA is a hospital. They got that is a good there. point. Yeah, it is, isn't it? The, yeah, they, so. they have physical therapists in there. Yeah, I, I think Stan might need more of a th- physical therapist. <laughs> but they might be able to recommend if I need to go to the hospital or or a quick call like this man's down bad. Yeah, or just like a quick body shot and then stand in front of the X-ray machine and see if anything broke. But wow. and then all right, you're good. Imagine a realm where I'm like Homer Simpson, and he hits me, and I go, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> which oh, that's all you, you got? I ah oh, man, if if he hits me in the rib, I'm going down because he just that's just what's good. And here's the thing too. What's hang on? So Stan, you've thought about this. Like, what's the move for you? Just be as tough as possible, or do you try to fade away from it? Do you try to meet it? Do you no, I'm gonna. As he punches you, do you go with it? I'm gonna. He's hopefully he doesn't go like this, because I'm gonna ask him for the same thing I've always asked for you: is let me go here and just elbows on my ribs and cover my ribs, and you could hit my organs. You know, just give me this. Ooh. Is it with a glove on or no, no glove? We haven't discussed Ooh, this. Touche. I'm saying that's a good. That's a good one. It's up to Tyrone's mercy. At that uh. point, we didn't discuss it. We so. didn't. Well, which means you could be like, obviously, I was talking about 18 ounces of glove. <laughs> yeah. no, I bought these 20 ounces for you. <laughs> yeah. Custom. Men's the man gloves. See? <laughs> these big, you know, those rock 'em, sock 'em, <laughs> big blow up. <laughs> Here you go. Tyrone. I just threw the ones out that I had for the boys. One to the stomach. I never really used them. One to the stomach, Tyrone. Go. But nah, I'll live. But horrible bet. I, I thought Justin Gage would do more Khabib. Like, Menace, you were in the bathroom when we started talking about Khabib. That was the best I've ever seen him look. Yeah, and he had a broken foot, right? I had a broken foot. But also, I, when you look at when you look at it, it's like Gaethje did it wasn't himself, where he was over. I said it. that. Where he was, like, he was literally in a wrestling stance, and I'm like, Gaethje doesn't fight like that, and Gaethje doesn't back up. And when you're backing up in a fight, like, that kills your cardio too. That, that right away that kills yeah. your cardio, especially if you're used to being the guy going forward. I thought Gaethje was gonna stand upright since his wrestling is so great and he's a good scrambler. All right, come out hard with your calf kicks. If he grabs it, you're 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 good enough to scramble with it, uh, and then make Khabib tired a little bit because once you do that one takedown and he scrambles up to his feet, you're like, oh dang, you you get tired being the guy that's taking him down. And then, uh, but yeah, Gaethje is just like his hands are down super low. He was thinking about the wrestling too much, and when you're thinking about the wrestling too much. That kills your cardio too a little bit. That's why I feel like you're so tired after that first round. But then also, man, you're, you're thinking like, man, was this a, is this a huge chink in Gagey's armor where you're like, is, is this ground really that bad? He's like, Khabib took him yeah. down. And, like he mounted him right away. And you're like, yo, he Stand didn't mount McGregor. McGregor was able to to hold off that whole first round. And like literally like Gagey just like playing down. He let him mount him. And then he got it. When you, you're hitting a mounted triangle on you, I, like, I mean – like, you do that to guys where you're like, all right, I'm going to play with this guy a little bit. I'm going to do a mountain triangle on him. So like, you're like, like, we know McGregor is a brown belt. I don't know what Gaethje is. Gaethje showed blue belt at best. 
against Khabib, but or maybe even purple belt and Khabib just showed high level, you know, but nothing passed. It wasn't he he looked lost on the ground. Granted, Khabib is a yeah. killer and looked so good. Gaethje had no answer once it hit the floor. Look, it could also be one of those two where it's like everybody before that Khabib fight uh, was after they fought Khabib was like, man, once you once he touches you, once he feel once you feel how powerful he is, like you never felt it before. And it could have been like one of those, oh, he got me. Like I felt like that was what Gaethje did. Like he got taken down, and instead of popping right back up, it was more so like, yeah, you oh, got me, dude. Good good takedown. And I'm like. He didn't. What are you doing? He needed to pop right up. He went to all fours and let Khabib just well, not let him, yeah, but I'm Khabib like, sunk the hooks you in. You know him. what Khabib's going to do? Like, most of the time, you know, you have coaches who are like, yo, we don't train for the fighter. We train for ourselves to get better. But Khabib's a style you actually train for. So if you're having an eight week camp, it's literally should be all for take down the fence or just getting off the floor without giving up your back. And I mean, obviously, he has Trevor Whitman, who's probably like the smartest coach in the world, like, really smart game planner, but it's like, you can have the best game plan in the world, but once you're in there, you have to execute it. And I don't know what his plan game plan was, but it was just like, how good is your ground? Is your ground really that bad? Maybe Charlos Oliveira is the, the next big name right now in that division because I think he's the only grappler now. But it opens up doors right now for like big name strikers and stuff where there's not that one dominant guy up top where you're like, oh, man, he could be everybody. So like that, that division is open right now. I think it'd be cool to have a, a tournament or something like that, but. To me, Charles Oliveira I said is like the one same the thing. Guys the tournament. There. Right? That makes the most sense, honestly. Like, if McGregor, if you do McGregor Poirier, but if Poirier, okay, Poirier deserves a title shot and he deserves a title. But, like, if McGregor wins, McGregor's going to take that title and go fight Pacquiao. He's not going to well, defend that title. So then you're going to be have to vacate that belt again. And you're like, what do you do now? What they have, no, I think what, you forget where you fight for. You're fighting for, you know, the company you fight for is for fans and money. But so if they can get if the car can get the belt, they get a fucking shit ton of money. And even yeah, Por- Poirier is big too. Poirier's got a few million followers too. But Dustin's or or Connors already has a win over him. I think they're like, all right, yeah, it could be close. Obviously, Dustin's changed a bunch of stuff, but if Connor fights him exactly like he fought him last time, I don't think Dustin wins. Uh, no, nah, but Dustin, I mean, he got caught with the hook last time. Dustin hasn't lost since then. Uh, the only person he lost, lost to is uh, Khabib. I feel like Dustin will come out a lot smarter this fight. Did he lose the to, fact that, uh, doesn't he, did he lose to Michael Johnson? No, that was uh, that was before the uh, what's called fight. Before Khabib, before no, no, because he because lo- uh, hang on. Wait, what are you asking now? Because Dustin said, fought. Th- uh, was that 155 that doesn't – yeah, it was. Poirier, right, my po- bad. Poirier, You're right. Poirier lost to Korean Zombie Connor. I don't know if Korean Zombie was before or after Connor. It might have been before. No, the the discussion was – oh. He hasn't lost Korean anybody Zombie beat five, Dustin Poirier be. way back in the day. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. No, well, we're talking about when Michael Johnson beat Poirier compared to Connor. Uh, after. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, but that was at 45. At 55, Dustin hasn't lost anybody but Khabib. Uh, was that 45 or 55, him versus? Michael Johnson? Michael, him versus Michael Johnson was 55. 55. 55. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my stats are all wrong. So, yeah, uh, Michael Johnson and Khabib are his only losses since Conor McGregor. Okay. But he also has the Eddie Alvarez fight, the no contest, which he was. He was winning. No, Alvarez was winning. Alvarez was winning? No, I thought they, they rocked each other, I thought. Alvarez was winning and Poirier was coming on. Okay. And then the illegal knee happened. And he like, you know, borderline, borderline illegal knee. Right. I thought it was illegal. But it, it technically is illegal, but it should be legal. I think. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind doing these on the ground. That is, yeah, I think they should it be. It honestly doesn't make sense. But I got distracted because I was talking with uh, Tai Tuivasa. What were we talking about? Khabib? What did Tai say? Tai Tuivasa? Did, did he say fuck menace or what? No, he said 
He's in, I told him to jump on for a shoey. He said he's in quarantine. It's fucked. <laughs> Sorry, lads. Got to tee up soon. So I wrote quarantine. He wrote stuck in hotel for two weeks. I can't leave the room. So I wrote jump on in. And he has the link. So we'll see. But I think he might not be able to do a shoey. So he doesn't want to come and like, watch us drink maybe type thing. I don't know. Oh. And then we have they the peed the bed in uh, Abu Dhabi. That was amazing. <laughs> that was so amazing. That was funny. I said I took that picture. I sent it to the people. I'm like, this is awesome. Like I pissed the bed. <laughs> <laughs> what? I would have took that to my grave. Like I would told like <laughs> Stan, like, hey, as my winner got so drunk, pissed the bed. Legitimately. It, is that the first time you've ever seen someone celebrate it? I have not seen little kids celebrate it. No. Like, I, Mom, I no. peed the bed. I, that yeah. was... That's better than Happy... What was it? Is it Happy Gilmore? Is that the movie? No. Uh, Happy Madison or... Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. Billy Madison. Billy, oh, yes. Billy Madison, yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, the kid who wets the bed, uh, pees his pants. No, no it's water Give boy. me one more second. And he's like, everyone my age pees their pants. It's the coolest. Oh, yeah. So what are you at right now? Are you in Jared's apartment? No, I got an Airbnb. Okay, who you got staying with you? My dude, the deal. I keep hearing. He's from Chicago, too. Well, wait, you got your finger completely on the camera. Oh, my bad. Oh, my dude, the deal. <laughs> What's going on, my man? He fights for uh, Bellator. I heard you had your fact checker in the background. I was like, who does he got there? <laughs> But, yeah, he was sitting there showing me video. He showed me a video of uh, Khabib getting taken down by uh, Abel Trujillo too. I yeah, mean, oh, all right, thanks. But but Trujillo took him down, and then Khabib was like, "Okay, now I'll show you how to wrestle." Yeah, and he's no joke, Trujillo. He's like a four-time NAIA All American. He's legit. Yeah, he wrestled yeah, in college okay. with uh, Usman. Abel, oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, and even you've seen his fights. He's legit. I think Khabib just probably the strength. Something happened early in the Khabib fight where he kind of just shut off and was like, "Oh no, this guy's, this guy's got me." Yeah. What's what's he doing right now? Anyways, is he in jail? Oh my god, I think he's in jail. I was about to say, I think that guy's in jail. Do you know what I just realized? Long segue to our third fight of the night: Kevin <laughs> Kevin Holland versus Mahmoud Muradov. Gotta go. You uh, got- that, that's the guy that's uh, uh, sponsored by uh, or managed by Mayweather. Who? Muradov? Yeah, I think so. I'm that's not his first MMA fighter, I think. Is he Russian? No. Uh, he's somewhere from the Middle East. But I know that he trains with Mayweather or Mayweather like sponsors him or manages him or something like that. I need my fact checker. The one fighting Kevin Holland. Who's your flag checker? My uh, fact checker. I keep him with me. Yeah, he's with. When I was uh, he's when with, I was ranked 15, I I got me a fact checker and I kept them. He's like my driver and everything. But then I got to 16, and then, now he got nowhere else to go, so I just keep him with me. I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he, my fact checker. He's been linked up. With, he's been linked up. <laughs> I'm not good at it. He's been linked up with Mayweather for a minute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know that was the guy that got him at. He said, hey, can, you put a, "Can you put a picture up on the screen?" I don't. He doesn't draw. A... I'm on the money team. He says. I think he only has one fight in the UFC. He has a knockout, but yeah, he's one to zero in the UFC. I have no Your idea breath. who he is, but he's fighting Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland, I like. He talks shit. He's big and long. Yeah, he's looked good his last couple of fights. He's, he's gotten uh, a lot better. He's he's a tough guy. If I could build an MMA fighter, I'm actually the opposite of. An MMA fighter minus like my cardio. What you're saying? Like a, uh, if I could build an MMA fighter, I'd have like a taller, long guy who's oh. strong with good cardio. That's like that's a chance, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, is that, with the right team, like that that guy could be something. Yeah. I'm the smallest guy. I'm the shortest guy in the division minus like two people. Where'd Stan go, piece of shit? Our fact checker got cut off. He's such a fucking fat fuck. (laughs) 
Like, what do you think about his girly long hair? <laughs> What's he gonna do? I, braid it? <laughs> my 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 brother just got like a man bun. I'm like, dude, you got a man bun? Are you serious? I feel like that was cool. Like. A few years ago, I'm, I'm watching a few people do it now. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's what I'm telling them. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, what? Well, I, you know what it is? So, my buddy Chris Wade's growing one out. I think there's, like, a, a show or something like that. They're like, dude, that's badass. Like, Vikings or something where a guy has yeah, a man that over with, I think. I've seen Chris Wade growing out his little rat tail, his little whatever you call it, ninja bun. I don't. Is I'm he, just like, is he still fighting for PFL? PFL is not a real thing at the moment. I was about to say, what do you know about that? P- PFL announced the season for April. They're going to start a new season, but I think that's fucked up. They're uh, they're suing people. I think, bro. No, the that means the man went one the year fighters, without the, fighting. The fighter. So, I know Lance Palmer and a handful of fighters. I don't know if Wade's involved or whatnot. They're suing PFL. Uh, yeah, but like Lance is getting a billion dollars paid. I thought Lance, Lance got paid two million. No, yeah, even but I thought Lance was getting a stipend. They were given the champions yeah. a stipend. They didn't give the, the fighters are like a thousand dollars a month, though. And why I would you? Think, g- I don't think it's anything big. Why would you give a stipend to the guy who won a million dollars? Give a stipend to these guys who didn't win. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. And then, like, for a lot of the guys, like where they said, like, "Yo, we don't even need a tournament. Just let us at least get a fight, so we get some sort of money." You're like. And then you're on well, – what show are they? I think they're on ESPN, aren't they, where they could at least make some money through sponsors or something like that, through commercials or something. So, like, it made no sense to me why they didn't want to at least run a show. They should have yeah, did some one offs Small companies like LFA or something doing small shows. Like, yeah. sh- do a show. Like, you're making your fighters mad. They all want to leave. And then you're making the fans hate you because the fighters hate you. Well, they're losing right. their fans because they're, they're not being out there relevant. Their fans yeah. are just watching UFC or Bellator. The fights that are going on, you know. Um, yeah, because I, wa- I Steven Siler has a fight coming up soon. I don't think the, some. I don't think the PFL. Not throwing shade at them, but I don't think the PFL has fans. I think each fighter has fans. Yes, that are going to watch. Or there's the MMA fan that's going to watch every fight. You know. Yes, I agree. You're wondering if uh... lost you. Oh, Bilal froze on us. He's in space. My bad. You guys got me? Yep, you're back now. What'd you say? I said, uh, now I wonder like, about like Roy McDonald. Like, if you guts coming there from Bellator, where you're like thinking he was going to win a million dollars this year, but now he has to sit out the whole year. And you're like, are the, how much are they actually paying him as a stipend? Because he was supposedly getting over 200 well, no, he's grand in, Bellator. He's, I thought he was in Bellator. No, he went to PFL. Yeah, PFL. Oh, that's right. He did come over. Yeah, he was the big signing. Well, and that's the, I mean, if PFL is going on and they're giving you a million dollars, that's the move. Like even, yeah, we were saying Michael Johnson. I think Michael Johnson wins that tournament. That's a good point. Yeah. Like a lot of guys where I'm looking at it, like, yeah, for sure. Where you there, you there'll be like, what are the odds of you hitting a million dollars in the UFC? Like, it's going to take you a while to hit those numbers. So like, if you could go there one year, hit a million dollars, even if you're a young fighter, like. Why not sign with them first? Be the champion. Well, and then UFC will pay you a bigger amount come, to come over there. Depending on your contract, because Ali hit me up at the beginning of – it would have been this year. It was like, hey, do you want to do the tournament? I was like, no, man, I'm retired. It's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm retired. Da, da, da. And then I talked to, like, Ryan LaFlair and Greg. And like, dude, you should fucking do it. Who gives a shit? I was like, yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. So I hit Ali back to, like – Hey man, like, I think I'll do it. Whatever he's like, you know, if you let's say you win, you you know, you'd probably get like seventy thousand dollars per fight, you know, to fight and win. He's like, you'll walk away after the eight months with, I think it was like one point like seven or something like that. I was or one and a half mil. I was like. Yeah. So I was like, I'll buckle down for fucking eight months and just live the fucking life of misery while working a fucking 40 hour week and like do it, you know? And then when I hit him back, he was like, Hey man, uh, 
Yeah, I think I think the the roster's filled, and I was like, all right, whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, if they do a 21 20 21 tournament, you better hit them up. That's that division is open too. The forty five. I mean, last oh no 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 no, no, no. Three I was times. gonna go fifty five. Oh, oh, are you going to fifty five? Fifty, okay. yeah, okay. forty five. It would have been Menace versus Lance Palmer. Yeah. Might have had to cross pass with Andre well, Harrison at some point. Or actually, I think he's done yeah, with BFL. Yeah, but that weight class would suck because I tell you what, that, that the, the guy at 155 that won it two years in a row, I got something for him. Do you? 55 would be shoot lay, but then also you might cross pass with Chris Wade. Oh, yeah. And the PFL might do that for ratings. That shit's hot right now. Yeah, team versus. Team. Would you do that? Would you sit out if you guys both made it to the playoffs and you were both on the same side of the bracket or no? I know a couple uh, of Russian guys did we, it. We, a couple we, of Russian guys we, said I'm sick. We both have kids. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all busy. You guys spar with each other, so it's like we fight for free all the time. Or used yeah, to. Yeah, that's what know? I tell people all the time too. I'm like, the sparring sessions sometimes they get hard and like you're you're you go harder than the fight. Yeah. Yeah, like. You versus who's at 170 from there? I know Askren's retired, but like, say Woodley. Like, you guys yeah. you guys are fighting for the title. Yeah. Or you guys are fighting for the number one spot. You know what I mean? Like, for it, No, of course. That's why when Gilbert Burns called out Usman, like, I was like, oh, I respect that. That he wasn't afraid to do that. Because you're like, and they both like were professional about it, I feel like. Oh, that one's going to be good, I think. So what's the deal yeah. with DC not fighting Vasquez back in the day? That's a good point. Like, I feel like that was more like... Now, now, if Vasquez has his number, I get it. Yeah. I could see that, but I could also see when the lights are on, Cormier winning that fight. For sure. But then there's also, like... But the practice room was... DC was kind of new to the sport when... Kane's his big brother. Kane was, yeah. Even though Kane's yeah. probably younger than him, Kane's his MMA big brother. Kane showed him how to throw a punch. Kane showed him how to, yeah, you know. Transition. Yeah. Showed him the, the wrestler to MMA blueprint. Which which changes things. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And then also it's like, yo, you could be an undisciplined fuck and eat whatever you want and weigh 250 and fight a heavyweight. Or you can win the title at 205, you know. Right, right. But that was even a thing for DC because remember he he fucked up in the Olympics making weight, so he yes. couldn't make two eleven. Now you're gonna make me make two hundred five just because we're boys. Yeah, but way more money on the line. And also maybe they looked at it like we're the best, so one and two we're gonna be fighting each other for the belt for two or three times. Let's just I'll drop to two hundred five. Yeah, maybe that came into play. Who knows? But well, I feel like we gotta get DC on on for that or. Kane. Oh my God! Even that. Is Kane relevant anymore? Kane's relevant. He's definitely no. <laughs> he's relevant. no. What I'm saying is like he's a Mexican. People want to interview him. He's a Mexican wrestler now. <laughs> I don't think he does that anymore. Um, he was in WWF. He had a little stint in WWF, and I think he's doing the what's it called? It's like triple Lucha libre. It's called like triple A. Yeah, lucha libre, something I'll, like that in Mexico. I'll try and slide in his DM and see what happens. You can yeah, shoot that shot. You, that's what I tell people. I'm always going to shoot my shot. I'll slide in these guys' hands. They answer. I was like, all right, cool. You miss so, 100% uh, of the shots you don't take. Well, Al, so me and Stan are um, – we're in cahoots with Ashley Evan Smith, and we kind of co-help her podcast. We want to try and build, like, an empire where, like, we, when we have guests on, like, yo, make sure you're on Blau's show next week and – do his oh. game show, vice yeah, versa. Sure. Yes, you know? I mentioned it to Aljo as well. And literally, you got to look at history and repeat something that happened that was good. So Joe Rogan took a bunch of comedians he knew, got them all together. They all bounced off each other's podcast, and they all were successful. So I had the idea of a bunch of MMA podcasts bounce off each other, and there's plenty of people to listen. There's plenty of success out there, so... Because if you think about yeah, that's it, that's a good like, idea. Yeah. If you want to talk like legit, legit fighting, like strategy, who beat who, da, 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 Al Jermaine. If you want to like shoot the shit about life, like drinking, sex, whatever, 
fights, whatever, us. You want to have a game show, you got Bilal. If you want to talk about, like, sex and porn, you got Ashley. <laughs> we're, I feel like we're covering every a, aspect a, of MMA. That's a good point, yeah. Me and Stan would be, like, the lifestyle aspect of MMA. You're the, like, knowledge and game fun. show, comedy. Ashley's the sex aspect, and then Aljo would be the fucking, you know, calling fights and shit like that and X's talking and strategy and shit. And then, obviously, every podcast dabbles in a little bit of something else. Like, you you play a game show, but you also interview the fighters. You talk a little yeah. bit about blah, 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 blah. Like, even one of the best things was, and I was saying the menace, I want to see Darren Till in Mike Perry's corner so bad. My oh God, my that God. would literally be the funniest thing in the world. I wish, I wish that would happen. And honestly, that's honestly the smartest. Like Mike Perry, if like people have, think about how many billionaires out there would want to be in somebody's corner, like just say I was in a, a fighter's corner. I'm pretty sure yeah. there's a lot of guys out there that would want to pay big money for that. I literally had a guy one time come up to me when I was in, uh, I was, it was like my third or fourth fight in the UFC, and he's like. Hey, I want to sponsor you. And he kept messaging me. And I was like, I wasn't even seeing it. But then he called up Rufus Sport. He said, Yeah, I'm trying to get a hold of Bilal. I want to sp- I want to sponsor him. And then I th- I finally got a hold of the guy. He's like, Yeah, where are you at right now? I was like working at a UFC gym. I was like, I'm at the gym. And he came to the gym and I was like, he's like, Yeah, I want to sponsor you. And I was like, What do you what kind of business do you have? He's like, I'm an immigration uh lawyer. And I was like, Okay, uh, I mean, like, I don't know what you want me to how you want me to post about you. And he's like, No, I don't want you to post about me. I just want you to stop working. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I don't want you to work here no more. I was like, okay. He's like, so how much do you spend monthly uh, on expenses? I was like, I don't know, four or five grand. He said, okay, I'll give you that monthly. I was like, all right, but like, what do you want from me? And he's like, nothing. I just want to see you do well, my brother. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. And then he like pulled out two grand out of his pocket. He said, there goes two grand. I'll give you the other two grand later. And I'm sitting there like, all right. You want like That's a, a weird or one. The whole time, like, the whole time you're thinking this guy's about to ask me for a blowjob or something. Like this shit's gonna get fucking creepy. I was like, "What is this guy talking about?" I was like, "All right, cool." And then all of a sudden, he's just like, "Like the next day, he's like, hey, uh, yeah, I want to be in your corner." And I was like, oh, "I don't know, think I could do that." Like I took it serious, you know. He's like, "Your first time in the UFC." Now, if he told me, I was like, "Now I want to slide back in his DMs." Like, "Yo, hey, you still want to sponsor me?" But like I told him, "Nah, you couldn't be in my corner." And then he stopped messaging me after that. But I still took it, still had it two grand. So it worked well, out. there's two ways to think about I want to be in your corner. Like, I want to be in your physical corner when you fight or in your corner and help you. Physical corner. Financially. Physical yeah, yeah. corner. He wanted, to be in the, he wanted to be in the physical corner. But now that I think about it, you really only need really two coaches in your corner. That third yeah. one can just be anybody. You can throw it away. So, like, I should have did it, honestly. Now that I think about it, I'm like, yo. I want to post about it, but I think Dana White shut that off saying that they try to make it say that you, you need to have something about fighting in you or something like that where you can't have somebody in your corner. So I don't, I don't know. I think he told Perry that you couldn't do it. Ah, oh, that's a fucking bummer. I would love to see that. Yeah, You're the one fucking fighting, not him. Yeah, exactly. I think it just it came down to like, oh, Perry's going to make money off of it. Oh, my He's God. Make other fighters do it. Let them start that and then fucking someone. Yeah, so, what? You're going to have random girls in the corner just freaking – Showing their boobs and stuff. Oh, I was gonna say we'll have medicine the man oh, in the corner Stan, screaming Stan dumb would shit. Be like Stan would be like, "Hey, on my corner." Like, <laughs> I tell you what, if you got a girl that you want to bang in your corner, you're one million, one million percent having sex. Unless you went out there and just got like knocked out cool. in twenty seconds. Yeah. Even then, yeah. there's going to be probably some pity sex. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried. Seriously. I don't think so. One. What? What do you mean? She's leaving with the guy who knocked you out. No. 100%. Nah, she's going to feel sorry I'm not real. saying if you. I'm not saying if you got like a celebrity. I'm just saying you like. You went to Hooters. You're like, you work here. You're like, yeah, like I'm fine. You know, in two <laughs> days. Like, <laughs> you want to come and be in my corner? <laughs> do you want a menu? No. I want to know the answer to that question. Do you want to come? And if she says weekend? yes. She might. Even, <laughs> even if she has a boyfriend, she might say yes. So who knows? What? One million percent. Yeah, they're saying yes no matter what, I think. 
And like she's watching you out there like fucking wreck a dude on national TV, yeah. goes back with you and you know, she sees all the cameras and shit. She's like and you're at your prime. You're at your prime zone of like with your abs and everything showing because you just cut yeah. weight yesterday, so you're not in fat mode yet. So you're like, all right, you look like a specimen. Yeah, one million percent. I used to close like every time I had like a pro fight on the lower levels. I would just you want to go part like end my like. Uh, wait, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> um, no, I was single then. All right, I'm just yeah, no. so. well, yeah, allegedly yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, and then also your confidence of just crushing another man who tried to crush you. You're just like I just can't lose. So Bilal, when is this next fight? Fuck you, Stan. December nineteenth. All right, you got a little bit of time, so you're like about to kickstart training camp. Yeah, that's why I said it was like the perfect time to come out here and get different looks. So like I'm one of those two where I'm always training no matter what, but uh, so like I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. So it's like not bad to go cross train somewhere else because you're already in shape. So you're not gonna embarrass yourself or get hurt or anything. Oh my god, you're always in shape. Like Menace mentioned last time we had you on that fucking chest. You got like the best chest in MMA. He does have <laughs> one of the best chests in MMA. But so what's your boy's name again? That's with you, Adil. So you and Adil just traveled to South Florida to visit Jared, get some training in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Nope. We were, uh, Ali wanted me to go to Vegas. We we're gonna go to Vegas, and then uh, like my, I have a buddy that gets buddy passes. You know what buddy passes are? Yeah. Yeah. So like I like I, I'll, I'll, I'm usually last second with everything. So I like hit him up and I'm like, Yo, I want to go to Vegas uh, Sunday. What's the buddy pass? He was like, All right. Uh, Flights. Uh, like he works for a Southwest Airlines, so like it, you're free by for a flight. So like if the flight's empty, you can just go on there. You get free flights. You get free flights if you have a friend who flies a lot. Yeah. Right. So. uh so, like, I'll hit him up. Like, Yo, I want to go to Vegas. He's like, all right, cool. And then Ali hit me up on like, Thursday. Like, brother, I got COVID. So, I'm like, all right, I'm not coming to Vegas. And oh, my God, to too. Oh, Ali has yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, he had it. Hopefully, he doesn't get him. But he's fit. He'll be all right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, he's he, was, fine. He, he was, like, shadow boxing on his uh, Instagram yesterday. He, like, shadow boxed for, like, 15 seconds. Then he, he, he was starting to breathe hard. He's like, man, I literally don't want to get shadow boxed for one minute. I was like, all right. But, uh, yeah, so I was like, all right, I've been telling Jerry for a while I was going to come to Florida and visit him. So I was like, all right, cool. We'll just go to Florida then. So I just told my friend, all right, come to Florida then. So do you roll in and you walk around and you're like, Christina, what's going on over here? Like you just start like making sure everything's in line in Jared's life. Like, Christina, he's good, right? I'm just here making sure. (laughs) He's living life, honestly. Like Christina's mom, literally, she has like a condo that's on a private beach. We went to their house yesterday. And then they, we went to their pool. They had like a saltwater pool. And I'm like, man, you really upgraded from Wisconsin. Like we're sitting in Wisconsin. So we don't have a TV stand. We have one couch that we freaking – that Paul Feather used to sleep on. Like it was a huge upgrade for Jared. Now I was like, now I know why you left Wisconsin. Oh, well, what's Wisconsin like compared to Florida? Yeah. It's a, it's a big upgrade. Yeah, he's living the life. But Bilal, you're the man – Everybody, hey, we still, where are we on the fight card? You keep doing this fucking huge. <laughs> oh my god, it's not me. It's all three of us. My bad. So we're on like we're on like fight four. Yeah, lo- we, we uh, we're a horrible fight preview. So now we got you this are. is terrible. Why is it me? So now we got you're the the co-main event. The co-main event: Andre Feely whoa. versus Bryce Mitchell. What do you mean? Whoa, Kevin Holland versus Mahmoud. All right, who do you got? Kevin, because he's American. Oh. I got Kevin. Yeah, I'm going Kevin. So Andre Feely versus Bryce Mitchell. Menace, you know a little bit about Andre Feely. Do you think he's beating Bryce Mitchell? I'm going Andre Feely. I guess we'll see how good Bryce Mitchell's jiu-jitsu is and like takedowns. Like if Bryce Mitchell takes him down, submits him, okay, Bryce Mitchell is the deal. If, but if you can keep it standing and fuck him up on the feet, then Bryce Mitchell is a one-trick pony and <laughs> fucking go fight fucking – who's that other loser? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan you know Hall? Exactly, oh, Ryan Hall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. <laughs> but. I only say that because Ryan Hall called me out like I was dodging him, and I never fucking dodged him. I tried scheduling to fight him like three times. Oh. And I'm like, no, I can't fight till September. And September came. Hey, Dennis, you want to fight? I'm like, yeah, but I just lost. I was like, at 55. He's like, well, he walks around 55, so he wants to fight you at 45. I'm like, no, 55. And then he fights BJ Penn like a month later at 55. I'm like, you fucking pussy. Continue, Stan. <laughs> I was just going to give the odds. So Bryce Mitchell is a favorite, minus 145. Feely is plus 115. Oh, I, I throw a couple bucks at Feely. I, I think he's I, got a good school I, over there, I, man. I think he rolls a lot of monsters. I like Feely as an underdog in that fight. Feely's tough. Too. Yeah, I like Feely, too. He, like he's a vegan, but he beat my boy. He so made. He beat my boy. So. <laughs> Dennis, after that one, was like, I'm done with life. I lost to a vegan. Hang on, listen. All in all, everybody lost to. Obviously, you guys are fucking monsters and whatever. But going into the fight, I'm like, if I lose this retard, <laughs> Elkins, <laughs> I need to retire. I lose the Elkins. I'm like, wow, I lost to a fucking mental fucking retard. I'm like, why are you feeling? Like, this guy's a vegan. He can't be strong at all. I lose this guy. I need to retire. I forget lost what, him. I forget who we I were. Lost- I forget who we were. I think we were talking to Uriah. And Dennis was like, you know, the retarded one. And he went, Elkins? Yeah, that one. So he like, said that? Yeah, he that. I feel bad. Elkins is a really good dude. I used to train with him in Indiana a lot. Well, yeah, he's from, he's a, uh, he was from Rufusport for a minute. No, no, he's from Indiana. He used to train at a, a, a small gym in Indiana called Team Colognes in uh, Duneland. Yeah, he trained in Valparaiso, Indiana. Or not Rufusport. He knows Askren a little bit. Oh, does he? Yeah, is what I've seen. So I, I associated him with Rufus Sport. Oh, okay. But yeah. Stan, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I pressed something. I think I muted myself on the side. Yeah. So, and, you know, the pre fight hype is like, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm going to go in there. I'm like, if I lose this guy, I'm saying to my friends, I, I need to retire. And then he fucking beats me. Then Philly, I'm like, this guy's a vegan, like a skinny, like, I'm going to fucking ragdoll this guy. He beats me in a split decision as well. I'm like, wow. And then I had to fight. What's his name? What's his name, Stan? Two first names. Rick Glenn. Ooh. Rick Glenn. Oh, Rick. And I'm like, this guy, nobody knows who this guy is. They're giving me a layup. He's skinny, whatever. Like, if I lose this <laughs> guy, the then, then I lost a split decision him. And I'm like, I need to quit. Oh, wow. Ready for this? Regular. All alpha male guys. Ah, uh, so then I'm like, is there how many all split decisions? goes into this bullshit? Oh yeah, three split decisions. They all like point. Uh, they all point fighted menace. Like you know, wow, st- that's heartbreaking. Yeah, and it was three fights where stats were close. Whatever, menace won. But what do you mean close? I'm saying if you look at the stats <laughs> on paper, the stats. Yeah. No, no, no. You beat Feely. Feely got those takedowns. You versus Rick Glenn, the stats on paper were close. And then you versus Elkins. I took him down six times. Well, then it comes into scoring, and it comes down to the rounds. All right, all right. So You took Rick Glenn down six times, and you lost his split decision? Yeah. He outstruck me by four punches. Like this. Wow. Like this off his back. Yeah. No way. yeah. Then I outstruck Philly by like 60 or 80 punches, but he got like three takedowns to my one or something like that. No, what so, did, Philly took you down twice, I thought. Might have been three. But like, dude, my butt would hit the ground and I'd pop right back up. Or count uh, as a takedown. Like might have not even got two in wrestling. That's yeah. Yeah, debatable twos in wrestling. Yes. Uh. And but feeling or er, to Elkins, like he had two legitimate takedowns. They were close, but if it went to like four and five, I actually might have murdered the man. Like third round, I blew him out of the out of the water. Oh, did you? I was about to say he has cardio. A lot of his stuff is breaking. Yeah, guys. no. It, it, I I was like I I knew I was losing, so I was like I got to fucking 
go for broke here. That's one uh, thing that Menace can hang his career. Well, the second you, round, the second round was you can hang goals. you can hang your career on that. Like I don't think you've ever lost a third round and fights that worth three rounds. If they would have went five, this? the guy was in trouble. That's where I was like, "Are you kidding me?" To Feely. A judge gave him that third round. I'm like, I actually almost murdered that man in the third round, and someone gave him that round for the win. Wow. I was like, did you see the fuck? The thing is, wow, you've been at fights where they put you behind the judges. Yeah. How many times do you see them like this? Like, the fights are here. Dude, all the time, you yeah. see this, like... Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what they're texting? Yeah, yeah, that's right, bitch. I'm at the UFC fights. I'm being the re- I'm being the judge, the referee, I'm in charge of this place. I'm gonna fuck you when I get out of here. Send. <sighs> so blah, that's I mean, that's I wanna get Michael Johnson on here and that's why I'm not fighting still. Yes. I'm drinking So yeah. main event Wait over here. Main event. Uriah Hall versus Anderson Silva, Anderson Silva's last fight. We got Anderson Silva is a plus 195 underdog. Uriah Hall is a minus 235 favorite. Uriah Hall. Yeah, Uriah. You say are you saying Uriah Hall menace? Or you that was you almost had a question mark at the end of that. No, I got Uriah Hall like if I had to live and keep my house or not. I'm not betting anything on it. No body shots, no money, no nothing. I'm going Anderson Silva. You're going Anderson? Anderson Silva. Can you back that up? What did you say? Can I back that up? Yeah. I think he's going to catch Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall is going to idolize him and not pull the trigger. Here's, here's how Anderson Silva wins. Ready? We've seen Uriah Hall not. Are you ready? We've seen Uriah Hall not pull the trigger against lesser people. He's not going to pull the trigger against Anderson Silva. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready for you. Go. Okay. I've already put down on paper. This is my last fight. I'm going to use the best stuff like the world has to offer so that I'm 25 years old. And I'm just going to fail the test anyway. You get paid, <laughs> like yeah. That's and a good the point. reason why the reason why you would get fined is like if you wanted to fight again. I don't think yeah. right. Am I wrong here? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, like you get paid full, and then when the tests come back that you're dirty, like all right, pay that if you want to fight anymore. Like no, nah, I'm done. I live yeah, also in retired. another country. You can eat that. And he did pop for steroids after the injury with uh, Weidman. And then this one, he got injured against Jarek uh, Cannon there. So, yeah, he probably is on something. We've also seen I make pretty bad bets here at Menace and the Man. So, Anderson Silva by decision. I'm not going to say by who, but a positive person to me, knowing that my last fight was going to be my last fight, I was like, hey, it's not illegal yet. But I got something. If you want to take it, you can. Like, and I was like, trust me, I thought about it. I'm on a four fight skid. And I was like, yeah, if it's going to help me win. And like, if, you know, let's say I come up, I pop for something like, well, I'm done anyways. You know, I didn't do it, but. Because I, I was about to say, you, you do it <laughs> because of legacy. I mean, for me, yeah, it was a dick pill. Listen, Bilal. I, didn't, I didn't accomplish like a crazy amount, so I didn't want to go out on even like a like, yeah, this guy's a piece of shit. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> like it's one thing if I was like sprinkling it throughout my career and like it kind of helped me get to where, but like all natural, yeah, you know, that's so, Stan. That's if. That's the only way Anderson Silva wins in my head. If he's on some sauce. Yeah. I think he is. How old is he? 45, I think. 
Yeah, that's insane. All right, Uriah, I'm, am I going to bet? I'm going with nostalgia. I'm betting on Anderson. I'm going to use an underdog. I think Uriah is a, for lack of a better way to put it, I don't want to say choke artist, but like almost he's going to freeze up. He's not going to. He, He'll never be champion. He's not going to. He, he's not going to go after Anderson. I might be wrong, but I, he, what's what's his record? What how, his last three fights? Like so here, I think he's. I think he's on a streak. Who did we see outstrike even old Anderson? Adesanya. Have we seen anyone at Cannoneer caught him with some le- caught him with a leg kick? I don't think Uriah Hall is that same level of aggressiveness. He's a better striker maybe than those guys. He's not the same level of killer that's going to And this go- is a fight in the making. Like this got scheduled before and then canceled, no? Yes. It's been in talks for a minute and now it's finally happening. It's almost like a striker's dream. This is a fight uh a striker fight fan's dream, but hmm. We'll wrap this up. I'm going Anderson Silva. We could probably stay here talk with Bilal all night. He's a, yeah, a, a great guest. We always love having him. Everybody, go check out Remember the Show. Bilal, thank you for joining us on the number one podcast hosted by a Puerto Rican named Dennis. <laughs> That's another yeah. fact I can post it on. That's a fact. <laughs> so, All right, guys. I appreciate you guys having me on. Bilal, you're the man. Thank you for the time, and we'll talk to you soon. We almost had Jared, and we'll do it next time. We're going to do who's Jared's real best friend, you and I'm down, and his girl. All right, guys. All right, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Please, Bilal, I love you. He didn't say it back to me. Uh, he said it too late. You said it when he already had his finger on the button. No, he said it in yeah. But Menace and the Man episode ninety five. I don't know. Ty was playing games. He didn't want to jump in for a show. He said we'll re- we'll schedule something. He's in quarantine right now. I thought he'd want to jump in. We would throw back a shoey in his honor. I would have drank one off my sandal. Oh, and just glided it in. Right, just. Oh, come on, Ty. Right here. Right. What do you think? Oh, yep. That that's a shoey, a sandy, something. I made a mess, but all right. Episode ninety-five. Well, see you later. Good seeing you, menace. Everybody, Likewise. You st- stay classy, fight fans. Uh, I wanted to leave. You can it, yeah. <laughs>